Lake Talk Live. We're more than just talk. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? So why is it got to be so damn tough? The music just dress me up. You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. Yeah. And the magnificent action pack. Got facts, got truth. Shock factors on now, where were you? Live and direct on your internet. Hot new talent always on the set. Yeah, broadcasting coast to coast. International too. Toast. Yes, we fresh to death. Wanna let you know we are the best. Got that walk in the right talk. That LA talk live coming at ya. Shock him in the shock factor. The radio will change forever. Time to turn it up, y'all. Wake, 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 wake. Oh, 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 oh. Wake up. Yeah. Word. Clap your hands out there. Ladies and gentlemen, clap your hands out there. Welcome. Yeah. To the world class. Chef Yes, yes, yes. We appreciate you. All the time, every day. It's another day. wonderful night. Oh, it's going to be a beautiful night. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Shock Factor. You're tuned in to LA Talk Live. Greatest show on Friday. <laughs> Is it freaking? Uh, we're going to call this uh, Unusual Friday. Uh, they out here spraying us to death, ladies and gentlemen, with these chemtrails. I don't know if oh, y'all know man. anything about it. Uh, the, the, the sky is out here is pretty hazy. You know what I tell them? Suck it up. Suck it up. <laughs> we've, been living all, it we've been living all these years. They've been Bring spraying it on. me all my life. Bring it on. They've been spraying me all my life. Man. And Tell them they you. need a new chemical. <laughs> they need I'm your host to tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Agent Orange ain't working. <laughs> it ain't working. It I'm ain't shot working. Kim, I ain't going nowhere. I'm shot Kim Williams. E. Quarter Wolf. And we got a special uh, guest tonight. I am. A um, couple of special guests. It's, uh, it's, it, you know, People talking about me, dude. We're, oh, we're, slow down. <laughs> Pump them brakes. What up, bro? <laughs> Pump the brakes. He told me to slow my roll like Roscoe, my legs is broken. We got a, his name is Roscoe Rico Jenkins in the house. <laughs> oh, you talking about that cat over there in the corner? Uh, we want to give it up to Roscoe Rico Jenkins. In Ringo, the house Ringo Jenkins. Rico. Ringo Jenkins. What up, though, over there, man? Roscoe what up, though, Rico Jenkins? <laughs> y'all, got, <laughs> y'all got Wrinkle Jenkins in the house? Wrinkle Jenkins. Rico in the house. Jenkins is in, in the freaking building. Hey, we gotta take off my jacket to this one. Yeah, show Man. that, show that, show that, Captain Mo, America. Mo, Mo uh, is out of town. Shout out to Chef Mo. Mo. Big ups to you, baby. We God, uh, uh, big up to Chef travels. Mo. She's out there handling her business. That's a beautiful she's in queen a of the show. Un- undisclosed location. Uh, you know, she's out there. She, we call her Grandma Dynamite. 
because she's be you know she be handling a lot of stuff and stuff like that. So I be really give it up. Uh, life MC he was here last week. He brought in always big, time. big life. Um, you know some here. incredible guests. Good um, energy. Bobby Brown's son and and, and the whole Kennedy and that's Clinton. Bobby Brown Jr. Exactly. That's Jr. Let's give that brother. His yeah. respect, Bobby Brown Jr. Right, exactly. is his official name. That's Jr. Jr. King mm-hmm. Jr. You know, you know, life and uh, Princess D. She's in school, so you don't know she's MIA right now. It's okay. She's so, in her spirit. We love you, Princess we're, D. Yeah, we're no gonna doubt. be we're gonna be getting us a new co-host. Oh, I'm not enough. What am I, chopped liver? <laughs> now well, that you got the, the big bad wolf with you. Ow! I'm just chopped liver. Hey, man, the Big Bad Wolf has been stepping up every week handling his fucking business. Let's you talk know. a little bit about the Big Bad Wolf. Yeah. Talk about me. Rocky E. Core. Talk about Rock me. Moore. Call me every black joke in the book. I done heard no, of all. Bring some I want to talk about this brother and the respect and appreciation I have for all the hard work you put in in helping to promote the station, many of the programs that we got out there to help promote artists. How you out there straight up on your grind, your hustle. Give it up to me, homie. Thank you, brother. Real yeah, talk. Man. Appreciate you know, that, man. To you and your fam. Yeah, man. Uh, man let's give it up for him. And apologies. Thank y'all for clapping. Sister, we really appreciate that. Zosha, right? <laughs> Zosha, you have no doubt. Yeah, I met her, and, uh, you know, I'm always working on some new comedy material, and I tried out one of my jokes she didn't find so funny. I do apologize. Zosha Rockmore. Send a shout out to Zosha Rockmore. Every y'all yeah. can check her out on the Mindy Project every Tuesday night at 9 30 on Fox. Tuesday night. Every Tuesday Recurring night. Recurring role. There. That's big. Exactly. She's a star. A regular on A man. giant. A giant it. in the business. My baby sister. Mm-hmm. Pretty and, too. You know, and your family comes from, and I met your brother uh, last week. What, a, wonder, bro. what a wonderful gentleman. B Rock. He was B Rock. You know how smart he is. And I love that boy, man. Yeah. He's very smart. I need to get with him too, man. Yeah. Like on some real shit. Yeah, my brother's like the brain. We used to call him B the Brains Rock. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Very he's cool. Your family, you know, come from. He's the first wow. grandkid on both sides of the family, you know? The first. <laughs> I can put this out here without fear of plagiarism and say that there needs to be a new. Uh, subline mm-hmm. targeted towards smart kids called Brains Rock. Brains Rock? That's dope. That's dope. And because it's on tape... Now somebody gonna get it out so we they can't, told it to they the can't world. Because, no, they can't because we've already got it on tape as being the first people who said it. Okay. Brains Rock. A whole new I line love it. I love it. for kids, especially sponsored by Defy. Tell us about Defy a little bit. Defy Pro Sport, yes. Yeah, an athletic apparel sport line. <clears throat> and... Uh, we have uh, water bottles, hats, hoodies, T-shirts with various different sayings on there. And, uh, you know, we promote everything that's positive, all against negativity. You know, like Defy uh, weakness, racism, intolerance, hatred, anything that's negative, that's what Defy is about. So <clears throat> we're here for, <clears throat> excuse me, for, from kids all the way to adults, from the streets to church. I mean, anywhere you can, you can imagine, everybody defies. Everybody defies. So Defy negativity. Everything. Everything negative, we're going to defy that. You'll see it on the skateboards, kids against, you know, defying gravity. You'll see it on surfboards. You're going to see it everywhere. Defy pro sport. So it's a movement more so than the athletic apparel line. It's more like a communications company because we just sending this message out to the world, you know, through our clothes. And all over L.A. because you guys are doing some real big things with some high schools here. You want to talk about that real briefly? Yeah, yeah. We also created a line for, uh, like, a fashion line, basically, for Dorsey High School. And they they wanted the number one uh, Shout out to Dorsey. Dorsey High School. Shout out to Dr. Uh, Reginald Sample over there. He's a great man. Also a Fiskite, you know, went to school with me. And uh, so he allowed us to Fisk have University that. Fisk for University for the uninitiated out there. That's exactly. Fisk, Fisk University. Fisk University. I said, excuse me, stand up. Had a delegation of Fisk men here a couple of weeks ago, maybe about a month ago. Mm-hmm. Heard y'all turn the town upside down. Yeah, some strong brothers, boy. Greatness, man. Greatness. Yeah, we got some uh, coming in in a little while as well. You Excellent. Know? So uh, shout some to Fisk is tight, man. Y'all get it in. Oh, man. I love my Fisk guys, man. The women to the, to the brothers. Oh, man. And you're nationwide. Here. It's not just uh, exactly. cats from one local city going yeah. to the same city college. Well, your nationwide. Look, his phone's blowing up now from Fiskites. Yo, dude, shout me out. Shout out some of your Fiskites. Yeah, I'm shouting out to you. You can't uh, do it now on the phone. Just tell him to wait. Hello? Yeah, we on air, yes. Yeah, we want to hear this. The, is, this is my guest of the show. We want to hear the conversation. Yes, we're on the air right now talking to my guest of the show. Reality Radio. This is reality Radio. For your listening and viewing pleasure, it, we've got a live phone call. From you in the parking lot? Okay, I'm coming down. Hmm, so, shock. Yep, I'm coming down. Another great night. Down. Let's listen to his conversation. Right I was really trying to talk over him. Just close I'm coming down. Ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, Miss Ella Joyce. 
Ella Joyce in the studio. Tell yes, people who Ella soon. Joyce is. Ella Very Joyce, special. Ladies, right, right before I go and get her, ladies and gentlemen, Ella Joyce is a wonderful, wonderful actress, thespian, uh, down to earth, strong black woman from Detroit, Michigan as well. Mm. What and, up, uh, Yeah, she's been in several movies, and uh, you can see her in like, like videos from two. But no, sm- most known from. But most known the from the TV the, show. Most known from the TV show called Rock. She was the wife on Rock. As well as she's in Tyler Perry's new film, uh, Temptation. But we're going to speak about that when she gets here. You know, and for so. some of you young listeners and viewers out there worldwide, if you don't understand how important it was, uh, how important the figure both she and the producer and actor on Rock was to the black community, where your mama would say, "Yo, are you watch," she would call you at that time because I had my own apartment. Are you watching Rock tonight? Exactly. Ella Joyce is going to be on the show with us next. Uh, he's going to pop out and go get her out of the parking lot, give her an official introduction and tour to the studio. In the meantime, me and the inimitable Shock Factor is mm. going to hold it down. Shock, how's everything with you, man? I see you over there munching. Man, I was very hungry. I see. It's reality radio. I you was, can chew on this station. I was starving. People try to compare internet radio to AM and FM. Let's, There's in, no comparison. Let's talk about that because we were There's talking no about that earlier. Yeah. And how people are, some people are still stuck on terrestrial radio and knowing that here uh, on internet radio and new media, we have, you know... uh, All the freedom you can possibly imagine to say whatever you want to say. And we can touch, actually we can touch more people, that we can touch a world. You know what I'm saying? Because of this worldwide It's global. 150 countries. When I first started looking at some of the stats, once we got on iTunes radio, you know, we're on iTunes radio, R&B soul, uh, genre of the iTunes radio lineup. Hey, I like to say this to people when they come to the studio and want to know more about what we do. Let me say this to the worldwide audience out there. Um, the importance of being listed with iTunes radio uh, is, is pretty simple. iPhone, iPad, iPod, therefore iTunes. Mac or PC, if you own any one of Apple's smart devices, you must Therefore, download, install, and utilize iTunes software. We're embedded in the software. There has been a recent release of iTunes 2, iTunes Radio 2, that is, iTunes Radio 2, that is going to place us in in in-dash car systems because Mm. cars are now becoming equipped, being built from the factory with Internet access capability. And they're building it into the dash of the car. Most modern cars have it now. Most high-end car manufacturers are building that in as a part of their system. Now, through the hard work that we've done over the four years, we're also on TuneIn Radio. TuneIn is an app you can download to any smart device and listen to us on the go in your car. But we're also in dash through TuneIn Radio in Chevys and Fords and the Mini Cooper. We also recently signed up and were accepted to AHA Radio, which is in Scions, Subarus, Teslas, Porsches, and also embedded in in in-dash car upgrade systems like Kenwood and Alpine. So the notion that internet radio is not drive time, well, we are pushing the envelope to completely dispel that myth because we are truly on the go what you want the way you want it. That's the forefront of internet radio. As I always say, AM and FM is where radio started. Satellite is where it, w- is where it went. But the internet is where radio is headed. I said that four years ago. It's even more true today. So yeah. that said, let us all be happy as broadcasters here that we have the ability to actually reach so many people and such far-reaching places, and take joy in the fact that we can actually reach out to our troops who are in foreign countries. So we've got some really great things going on here, and as always, we have great guests. Oh, my God. And speaking of great guests, one just, you know, uh, an incredible lady just walked in into our studios, um, and we have to give it up for her, um, Ella Joyce. Ella Um, Joyce. Ladies and gentlemen, not yet. Yeah. We're gonna have you on momentarily. We're gonna go to a break and adjust our yeah. cameras. We have to make sure proper, we get the yeah. introduction. She is incredible, and, and like I said, we said earlier, 
you know, remembering her from her many performances, you know, and being such a professional at what she does. And um, Well, in my case, remembering what she represented to me um, in that age group, I'm pretty sure I'm older than her. So seeing a beautiful young black woman um, playing opposite some of the great actors she's worked with, like Rocky Carroll, um, the other brother's name is uh, Charles Dutton, um, having a black sitcom on when it was so hard to find consistent black television programming, respectable, hardworking people, amazing work as a representative of our path as black folks mm. in America. So this was great TV for me. And when you think of the uh, spinoffs uh, of careers that occurred from that uh, one sitcom alone. Rocky, Rocky Carroll had a great career. Charles, Charles S. Dutton, of course, lots of things right. he did beyond that. So we've got some really good stuff to talk about tonight. At least you guys do, because I'm about to bounce and make room for all the wonderful guests. <laughs> but like, I had I to know. get it off my chest. You know, my new show starts next week. Let's talk about that right quick before it's we take this break. It's called Speak On It. Speak On If it. you say it, own it. Believe speak it. On speak it. On it. And I'm going to be quite we get, frank. We're, gonna, what is that? we're just going to be arguing on the show the entire okay, time. Okay, cool. Speak on it. Me and my main speak man, on it. attorney counselor Steve Burt of Burt's Law. Uh -huh. He's going to be co-hosting with me. He's got some guests he's going to be bringing in. We're going to do the official relaunch of that show next Friday All at right. 6 p.m. Pacific exclusively here on the world leader in internet broadcast. You better believe it. <laughs> so y'all heard it Talk here. Live Founder Rich Carr. Talk Live Broadcast Network. Founder, General Manager, yeah. Rich Carr. I'm just... It's an judge. honor to be standing here sitting yeah. here with my man. You know what I mean? GM just stands for General Maintenance. Trust me when <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> Right, so guys, look, uh, I want to thank you guys for tuning in once again here on uh, LA Talk Live. Well, how about me? You want to thank me for joining yeah. on your show tonight? I was going to get to that. Getting, was, yeah, yeah. I know everybody. I know you. Were. I'm just messing with you tonight. I'm everybody's everybody's excited movie, because El, you know Miss Joyce is fact, in frankly, the she's building. Really good too. And she, as always, uh, always a such, queen. You know, First such class. Person, know. You know, it's you know when, you know when you talk about when women really exude class. You know, and just that standard, you know, and I can't wait to talk to her about her, you know, her life. But we're going to go ahead and take a quick break, come back with more Shock Factor here on L.A. Talk Live. want to thank you guys for tuning in. I want to thank... Uh, no need. I was joking. I, I don't need no thanks, man. I'm here at the best no. my creator. Man, we're going to give it to you while you're purpose. still living <laughs> here and, and living here on this earth. I'm giving it up. He said, I don't need no thanks, you know, but I wanted but to... I did. I did fish for some, didn't I? <laughs> I threw my hook. My bait out there, didn't you? Oh, that left hook. God. You came with the All left right, one last week. I baited him with that. We're going to come back, though, with more Shock Factor here on LA Talk Live. It's uh, a wonderful Friday. Uh, Ecor. Yes, sir. Radio Rich. We'll be right back, guys, with more Shock Factor. Yeah. Jews. <laughs> We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and hosts of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Hi, this is Elena inviting you to join me every Wednesday at noon for Elena's Beauty Talk and more exclusively on LA Talk Live. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio, R&B, or watch us on Ustream.tv, Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hi, this is Donna Quarles, and I'm inviting you to join us every Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. for a new show right here on LA Talk Live, The Dialogue, Real Talk, Real People. Join us as we discuss the topics that are relevant to today's generational leaders. So don't forget to tune in to The Dialogue, Real Talk, Real People, every Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. right here on latalklive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio RMB. 
Live 365, Radio Flag, and now Stitcher Radio. Or watch and listen directly at latalklive.com. Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hello world, how you living? This is Dee Brex, your host of the all-new rap project here on LA Talk Live. That's latalklive.com. Or you can find me on iTunes Radio in the R&B section. That's The Rap Project every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's Wednesdays at 7 p.m. West Coast Time. So don't be late. On The Rap Project, I will be playing the very best of rap and hip-hop that goes beyond the ordinary. So connect with me, your host, D. Brax, the rap connoisseur, on The Rap Project every Wednesday at 7 right here on latalklive.com where we are more than just talk hi this is don christie inviting you to join me every friday 1 p.m pacific for my all new show the don christie show join me as i discuss love spiritual readings your purpose why am i born What am I here to do? So don't forget to tune in the Dawn Christie Show at 1 p.m. Pacific, exclusively on LA Talk Live. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B or watch us on Ustream TV, Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live. And we are more than just talk. L.A. L.A. Talk. Advertise with us. With our fan base growing across the globe, you can advertise whatever you like. It's cheap. Whatever you want. It's cheap. It really is up to you. Keep it positive. You're just advertising on iTunes Radio. And here at LA Talk Live, we broadcast to 4 million listeners in 200 countries around the world every month. If you would like to put your product in every city in the United States of America. 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 Advertise. Advertise here on LA Talk Live, where we're more than just talk. Just talk, talk. This was brought to you by Shaquem Williams, host of The Shock Factor.
Yeah, yeah. Welcome back to the Shock Factor here on LA Talk Live. Want to welcome everybody back. Uh, we listen to some of that jazz right now um, because uh, one of our special guests, she loves jazz. And we listen to some of this Roy Ayers, What the People Say, you know. Uh, but want to welcome you guys back. Uh, you know, and jazz ironically puts me into that vibe or energy, you know, makes me want to talk sexy. Like, yeah, hey, how y'all doing? Uh, sexy talking. So, uh, at the end of the day, I'm going to have bring everybody up in here right quick. But, um, it's, you know, such a beautiful occasion when you get a chance to have such greats come and bless you um, with, you know, their energy, with their love, um, with their experience, you know, and we really, really, really appreciate that. Um, not only because, you know, they could be doing anything they want to do in their life. They don't have to, you know, be giving back anything, but they feel, you know, like, like those with that spirit feel it as if it's necessary to give back. And they've been doing it all their lives and we really appreciate them and their love and stuff so let's see what we got going on here in the factor yes yes <laughs> is, is there a funeral tonight is, is somebody a funeral tonight <laughs> it's like you just gave a lecture to somebody or and then, hold on. At somebody's funeral let tonight. me do that for richie right yeah. quick hold on so anyway Anyway, <laughs> you know, the jazz just set the mood to make you feel cool. You know, yeah. make you just always want to, like drag all your last words. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? No. <laughs> uh, but ladies and gentlemen, I do want to welcome that voice you're hearing right there. That such class, and you know, I want to just just go ahead and give it up to Ella Joyce oh my in the building. God. They out there, they out there watching, they out there in the audience. Hey, how y'all doing? Oh yeah, but that 4.5 out there watching though. How you doing, Miss Ella Joyce? Oh, I'm doing real good. I'm feeling real fine tonight. Oh, and you're looking so fine too. Oh, thank you. Oh, beautiful. You know, you're looking so beautiful (laughs) and your energy is so radiant. Oh, you played that for me? Yes. You know, Miles Davis. (laughs) Come on, that's the man right there, baby. But I just want to just say this right quick. You know, Ella Joyce, a, ce- a celebrated actress of the stage, film, and television. Ella, Ella, says remember, Ella is remembered and beloved as Eleanor on the TV show Rock. And, you know, when, when, I, was, when I was watching that growing up, and we talked about that earlier, how that shaped, because there wasn't a lot of black, there was, I don't know if, if, if any, black shows. Yeah. Yeah, we were the first black family show at Fox. Yeah. Even wow. though In Living Color was there, it was a sketch comedy show. Right. We were a family mm-hmm. show. And we were the first African-American um, family show sitcom at Fox. So, no, they weren't around. And then after that, it sort of brought on a few other networks because we had UPN for a while and we had a lot of wonderful black shows that came out of that and wonderful black stars that were able wow. to emerge like from Bernie Mac to you know some, so from many. everyone right. you know uh, Cedric the Entertainer all of them Steve Harvey were able to have shows and work and now that opportunity is gone you yeah. know we don't have any um, you know several networks not just one network yeah. mm-hmm. but we should be present on all the networks yeah. mm-hmm. all of them the big mm-hmm. networks as well FCC license networks there there are no shows that are documenting our times right now because that's right. what those shows did they documented our time our right. footprints so to speak in terms of what we thought about things what right. we may have found funny what we may have found to be a poignancy you know we it was all in what we were expressing then thank god we had shows like from the jeffersons and good times and cosby and all those shows up to the present and now they're gone and we as a people should be significantly alarmed Mm -hmm. and upset and we should be making we should be making noise about it because 
it documents our time. Suppose we hadn't had a show like All in the Family that spun off the, the great actors right, that exactly. came out of that and had show. And when we look at those shows, mm -hmm. we sit back and watch some of the great black artists that mm -hmm. appeared on those shows. Right. That documented their biography as well. Yeah. We're not doing that now. Yeah. We it's should right. be it's, it's upset. Right. Well, you know what, um, Ella? Have we have... Go ahead. And... and I think that, you know, where we are today, and one of the reasons why I'm glad that you're on the show, because you have so much wisdom to offer. You know, your cup is full. Experiences. Right. <laughs> right. But, you know, one of the things that I like to talk about, you know, what we're celebrating today is this thing called new media. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And now, more than ever, right, you know, we can in influence our own community more than ever now. Like before, we had to go to somebody and beg them, you know, a producer or a writer, whoever had to go to them and beg them just to even make, be considered, right. mm -hmm. you know, for a show. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, when you have our community where it's, you know, really, um, when I say the, the internet community, it's so vast, mm -hmm. you know, China, and you know Asia owns 54 or 50 over 50 some percent um, ownership, not ownership, but viewage of the internet. Meaning that they're bigger than America and Europe, right? So we have markets out there that's so untapped that now, if we bring, keep in mind that of ownership now, because before they owned it, mm -hmm. they took it. They took our energy, and I was talking about this earlier. They took beautiful people, you know, abilities and skills, right? And say, okay, I'm going to pay you this. You know, you're going to do X, Y, Z. Right. And you're not going to own anything, but I will give you whatever fame and fortune that you think you are getting. But while all that's going on, I'm sucking you dry. And I'm capitalizing. And I'm getting this money. And what's, and what's kind of happening now is that we still don't really own anything. Nothing. And that's what the problem is. Right. In 2013, studios. Studios. with everything we've been through, Tyler from what Perry. you just said. <laughs> just one man right now. Right. From what you just said, it shouldn't be this way right and now. It's too much money, in, it's too much money in black Hollywood. Things. And we don't. You know, I mean, I thank God for people like Tyler Perry, you know, not just because I'm in his latest movie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tyler Perry's Temptation. Y'all go pick it up now. <laughs> pick it up. It's on DVD, y'all. Yes, go pick it up now. Go pick that up okay, right go there. Go get that one. And it's a wonderful little movie, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you know. Go, yes, y'all go get that. But, um, <laughs> you know, not just because of that. I always, you know, I always was hoping that he would, you know, eventually um, get around to wanting to work with me, you know, because he was hiring a lot of black artists right. that He's maybe in Atlanta, yeah. we hadn't seen on the screen in a while and giving them good roles and bringing some new actors and some old actors together. But my point is he's only one person. Right. We can't look at one person that has figured out the game right. and is playing it like a baller at the top of the rung. Yeah. We can't look at him and expect him to save everybody. No. We need 10 Tyler Perrys. Yeah. And so what in my own way what I try to do is influence strongly the young people yeah. to begin to think like someone like him. I, I'm not saying you have to make the same type of artistic choices, but as a business person, mm -hmm. being in charge of your art and in charge of your career, mm -hmm. thereby in charge of your life, begin to think like someone who has figured out the game and is a true baller right. up at the top. Mm -hmm. You know, he has his own studio, which is not just a production company, right. it's a studio. Right. That means you, you're conceiving of the films and you're making them and you're- Right, you, you, not just his. Yeah, and you got distribution going on. That's what we need. We need to own more. I mean, the internet is great because it's opened up so much mm -hmm. for us, but in the film industry, in the television industry, why do we only have one or two fledgling black networks? Right. 
in, in 2013. We, Why we, is it like that? Mm -hmm. and, and thank God we have them. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we didn't have them, and I mean, BET is not really owned by African Americans anymore. Right. So what do we have, really? We were too busy, you know, in a way, just being consumers instead of being power brokers, mm -hmm. instead of thinking about later on, I want to have my own company. I want to own my own masters. I want to, you know, be able to give other people jobs. Right. You know, have exactly. my own movies, write them, produce them, put people in them, and not have to ask the higher ups whether this is the actor you can hire or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have to deal with that, with them telling us who our stars are and who we can see in movie to movie right, to right. movie. And that's just the game, you know. Because they'll throw anybody, they'll throw so many faces on theirs. They'll do long. whatever they want. But the point is, is we should be able to do what we want. And so I take my hat off to someone like Tyler because he's doing his thing. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He's doing what he wants to do the way he wants to do it. Right. And that's all that really counts in the long run. You don't have to like every movie he puts out. You don't like to have, have to like his TV shows if right. you don't like them. But we watch but you got to respect somebody who is out here doing what they want making to do. Making their dream come alive. And making their dream and not only come they alive. And not only they dream, other people dream other as people's well. Other people dream too. You're giving so them employment. I tell folk, you know, start thinking, start paying attention and modeling yourself after somebody like mm -hmm. that. That's, that's successful. Yeah. Who, who yeah. really took it upon himself to look out for the other actors that mm -hmm. had been out here a while. Right. Thank God. You know, I love looking at his movies and look up and see Mila Gibbs up mm -hmm. there. And, you <laughs> know, just, uh, yeah. It's exactly. supposed to be like that. We're supposed to be in positions of looking out for our own. Mm -hmm. And why aren't we? I mean, really, we got to think and meditate on that. That's a serious where, issue. Where, you know, where is the where is the problem with that? You know, where does it lie? You know, well, well, I mean, and it's been well, like we, that. We kind of know what. what it's, it I is. mean, of course, there's always the crab in the barrel effect. I mean, for years and years, and but when is that going to like? I mean, it's, really, it's, it's, really, it's, 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 it's psychological trauma, and it, we we can look at the leaves until we get to the root. Psychological trauma. That's you know? exactly what it is. I'm that's, traumatized that's nice, that's myself. That's a nice thing. That's a nice thing. Psychological. I'm traumatized trauma. myself. You know. Yeah, we all are. <laughs> You know, because we've, you know, been given certain information yeah. that we think whether it's true or not, when it comes to economics, right? When you when you find out that there have been people out here that has been systematically, right? People think when they were saying in the 60s and 70s when a black man was saying, hey, man, the man is holding me down. Right. And then a lot of people said, man, you get, you get off your ass and go ahead and do something and blah, 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 this, mm -hmm. that, or the third. Mm -hmm. Didn't know economically that there were sanctions against black people economically saying that we're going to stop you from doing X, Y, Z. Right. Right. And they, you know, and you feel like somebody's holding you down, but you don't maybe have any proof. But now there's proof exactly it's out there. here today. It is, <laughs> it is. economically I mean, where they the, have the shut game, it down. The down. game is to make you think that the psychological hole that has held you <laughs> back is right. not there. Right. It's like what is the old adage they say in, in one of those movies on, on uh, what the uh, uh, unusual suspects? They were talking about how the greatest. Kaiser so say. Yeah, so say the, the greatest, greatest thing the devil ever did make you think, right, right, make right, you right, think right. he yes, don't, exist. don't exist. Exactly. And the greatest game they have put on us was to make us think that we're all equal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that it's only about money, that racism didn't have nothing to do with it. Right, right, and right. then as soon as you say it does, they put you in a trick bag. Right. <laughs> make you think you you're talking crazy. out your behind. You're crazy now. But then you, why yeah. is there not one black family show on a major FCC license network? work right now and i'm talking about abc cbs nbc and fox right. now here's when there were plenty I, i'd like to pose as a question to the table because sister knowing your background and knowing your work i'm always incredibly humbled just with the notion that you have been on million dollar sets and here you are uh in our humble little studio that you would grace our studio oh, the you. wisdom you speak is virtually irrefutable um, you've been there, but I've never been in Hollywood other than in an ancillary capacity as a technician in computers, right? And I didn't come out here from the cold streets of Philadelphia 
despite the fact that I used to be young and pretty, um, <laughs> to get into the film industry. <laughs> yeah, I it's see so that funny. beauty. I see it, honey. It's so funny. <laughs> that bar- that Barack in him. See wow. that Barack in him? See I, that Barack? I, hold on. Hold I see on that now, eye candy That's possibility. My joke. Uh, All but right. listen, on some real talk, <laughs> what, what I fight against um, <clears throat> as one of the co founders of this radio network, this broadcast network, I don't even call it radio no more because I'm watching you on screen right here. They can see you on Ustream. They can see you on LA Talk Live and all those other clocks represent other URLs that we own. Yes, some of them are not working. Don't worry about this. It's an art, <laughs> it's an art project I haven't finished yet. Right. I tell you. Beautiful, though. Thank you very much. But the point being that what I'm struggling with and coming up in an era of the 70s of social consciousness, late 60s, early 70s, uh, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Uh, I don't want nobody to give me nothing open the door let me do it myself. And the whole do for self movement what I'm trying to figure out is why do we need the FCC anymore? Well, now I, in deference to your hard work for yeah. television, because right. broadcasting is a different world. I, that's, I know that's what you're another talking one about. of your worlds, and I, right. you know, I've always felt that the radio is the heartbeat of black people. Anyway, no matter what technology comes in, we're always going to be dealing with each other on the radio and I love that. talking to one another and listening to that beat, that right. drum beat, that mm-hmm. tribal beat. Right. It's there and it's always going to be there. I came out of Detroit, you know, where the, the radio was king and it Billy, always George will be. That's, that's that is what made a lot of people. But when I say FCC in, in my industry, which I'm now I'm talking about the television industry, the visual industry, the reason why it's important is one significant fact that most people don't realize, and that's the game right there. And that's that the FCC license network pays the most. It's simple as that. The the money they make on those networks is what the kids call stupid money. (laughs) Why aren't we there? Now you understand. That is why I'm upset. Why do we not have access to To those high paying jobs? Mm -hmm. And I'm not just talking about for actors, I'm talking about crew. Can you give us some examples of money? Can you give us some examples of money? Um, Well, you could start out, I mean, you know, back in the day when we were doing pilots, um, you Mm. know, you get to an FCC license network, you might get 13 episodes a year. Uh, when Fox came into existence, we were getting up to like 22, 26 episodes a year. Mm-hmm. Well, if you look at a show like Seinfeld that on, was on the FCC license network and you got people getting like, like when he walked away, he was making, I think, like, I mean, in the millions. Episodes. Millions like, like an episode. Like, uh, millions an episode. No, uh, millions. Uh, an episode. Millions. Like, uh, like uh, Friends, no, TV I, show Friends. Honey, these people, these white folks are making so, 20 so, million an episode. So why is the FCC uh, affiliated with the flow of that money? Not, well, I, I, I'm just saying. Other I, than the obvious, I, I right? Can't, the obvious is, is the answer. <laughs> really? is what I'm saying. The That's obvious the is answer. the answer. Right. right. Look <laughs> at it. What hour-long <laughs> black show do we have? We don't have an hour-long black show. We don't have a 22-minute a, a and 50-second mm. black show because the rest of it is commercial. Mercy. So we don't have a 30-second black show on those networks. That is significant. You know, we have... Thank God we have, you know, some black wonderful actors showing up on shows like, you know, we got um, Scandal. Scandal and we yeah. got, um, uh, I saw, oh God, I, I love Angela show. Bassett on The Other Coven. Oh mm. gosh. <laughs> like, like, like my little, like, like my she, little sister that's oh, on she, uh, Mindy Project. Yeah, so you know, more. we show up on those shows. But w- the point that I was getting ready to make, which is significant, is this isn't just yeah. a hardship for actors. Reason everybody has to be concerned yeah, because crew. this is about the crew too. When we had a black family shows that had emerged, we had the ability to hire black directors, right. black writers, cameramen, black gaffers. cameramen, black That's gaffers, boys. black right. grip, black lighting people. Black everybody had a chance to grow and learn in the industry and mm. to be hired. Black script supervisors, black catering services. So the TV show, Mom's Barbecue House, right. up there. Right. And right. Then she on, she worked money. on all of she our networks. Money. Right, they giving her she money. She worked right. on all of our networks for a while. Wow. You would go uh-huh. to one, and you knew her food when right. you was there. Oh wow. That's good. Well, when when they take away those shows, 
Take that means the whole hierarchy of exactly. ability and opportunities for work is taken away from everybody. Costume designers, set designers, mm -hmm. um, hair, Boom makeup, operators. light, Casting. gaps, uh, gaffers, grips, Boom operators. Uh, PAs. How much work is Robbie Robinson pay? getting right now? I, I don't know. Right. I mean, but how what much I'm is, saying is, is this is why oh, Robbie Reed. this is this is why this is an emergency, and also for the black casting people because they were able to come up through the ranks because of all the black shows that were coming along. Robbie Reed is one of the people that discovered me. She brought me in to audition Word. for the network at HBO, which was our parent <laughs> network, wow. which brought us over to Fox. Right. So at that time. She, her and Tony Lee were working for HBO mm -hmm. um, underneath the head casting woman who was a white person. And then, of course, she was able to grow. I mean, look at the talent that she bought to rock. Look at how she was able to grow from there. She also brought me to the movie Set It Off. You know, so I've it, it, it made a lot of wonderful relationships with casting people throughout the years, especially the black ones. But... A lot of them, you know, you look at it now and it's like the machines that were moving and were so promising have come to a crank mm -hmm. stand mm -hmm. Do you know how many yeah. scripts that are out there that, I mean, you know how many great scripts that are out there yes. that's written by black mm -hmm. writers? Yes. It's, a, uh, it's uh, millions it's, of it's them. so many of but the not people out there that should be working. I know one guy who that was threshold. fantastic um, costume guy. And uh, I think he got an Emmy or something somewhere. And he got to go over to Europe to find work. Because if you look at the white shows, and that's really what they are. I, there's no other way I can put it. They're white shows. Like I don't care family. if one of us shows up on them or not. They're white shows. <laughs> and, you know, when you look at those shows, you know, where are the opportunities for us? So was the Parker's how a black many show? Black, how many black people I would <laughs> want to know? Is working as a crew member behind the scenes on those shows. Right. See, if you show up on that show and then I look at the crew and they're mostly black, then I got to kind of think about that and say, okay, well, they are really opening up the industry and making sure everybody got equal opportunities at these jobs. But you go on those studio lots. Let me tell you something, baby. The day that a black person shows up on the lot, all the white people on the lot usually tell you if you you know because you're wandering around wondering where to go and as soon as they see a black person they say oh i know where you're going right there Talent. it's right there say that Talent. hold up say that it's right there because you're black and we don't see black people here so you must be coming well, for right. the one job the one black job Extra. we got <laughs> for people today and they're all auditioning right there so they can point to you wow. exactly where you're going because they don't see us among them right. we're not there on on the lot in exactly. numbers. Now, I can speak to that, and I said earlier, I worked in an ancillary capacity in the industry out here mm -hmm. in servicing their computer needs for rentals, for production houses who needed to rent equipment for 13 weeks, whatever. And I used to be one of those persons, especially me, wandering around on a lot because I didn't know a lot from a lot in Philly. Right. <laughs> it's the same difference. Like, oh my gosh, you know, these big uh, buildings. I, uh, so I understand that part, but the question I've got to get back to, and I want to just pose this, I'm because I'm real curious about this. So you're saying that the FCC is controlling the ability of us to produce our own stuff? I know uh, when I say what other I'm than saying, the obvious, I know there's a mechanism. What I'm saying is the place. FCC <laughs> license network right. is ABC, NBC, right, CBS, and Fox. This is why all the years Jet Magazine always listed the black people that were on any one of those shows. When you go back all uh -huh. the decades that uh -huh. Jet been around, yeah, they, they always are. listed whenever there was a black person yep. that showed up on any one of them. Now, this is before cable. Right. Okay, we only had it one, for the longest time three networks, ABC, CBS, and, NBC. and NBC. That was it. Fox was the fourth one to join as an FCC licensed network, as a complete network. As a complete network, then you're subject to all of the rules and the laws of a complete network. So if you're brand new on TV show, you might start out making $20,000 a week. And that ain't nothing. That's nothing money right. to a, a, a lot of folks at the right. network. Okay. So what I'm saying is when you look at all the jobs that are there right now, who got them? 
Do you feel the FCC, though, is the question I'm asking, has a significant influence over No, those, I believe it's job, the networks themselves who are indebted to their advertisers. So mm -hmm. it's the networks. It's not so much the FCC. Right. It, because if we knew what it took to become an FCC licensed network, we would be one. We don't have an FCC licensed network. Not there even, are none of us not green even lighting. Uh, uh, FCC licensed networks is ABC, That's it, just them four. CBS, NBC, NBC and Fox. And Fox. And so These are channels own? you don't need cable to get. You understand? Right. You don't need cable to get these networks, and they pay money. And the, the, the people that advertise on them is why you could have a show where somebody like Charlie Sheen is just making all this money. You know, and I enjoyed watching the show very much. But you got to understand the advertisers advertise there because they know they got millions and millions and millions of people watching this show between 8 o'clock or 8.30 or 8.30 and 9 o'clock. And so what are they doing? They're paying billions and millions of dollars per second to advertise. That's where their salary comes from. Mm -hmm. That's why you paying these actors $20 million an episode mm -hmm. because they're getting their money from the advertisers. And in, in, in reality, that's who their boss is. That's who the boss of the <laughs> network right. is. But it's set up so that you don't know that. Right. So you sit up and you say, well, let's go, you know, um, boycott an event. <laughs> well, boycotting the Emmys ain't going to do nothing. Mm -hmm. Boycotting the people that advertise on the Emmys now. Now you won't get somebody paying attention mm -hmm. if, if, if um, Coca-Cola or Pepsi or whoever is advertising you know it's a lot of money during that one minute that they advertise. Now, if all of a sudden all the black people just say, we're not going to buy Coca-Cola this week, they're going to they um, lose billions of dollars. And, and then the people that run the network is going to say, well, let me see now. We done lost how much this week and the black folks ain't buying the Coca-Cola and all they want is a black show. we still show? have that power? Maybe we need to sit down and talk to these colored folks and see why they so upset. We still have that power. We have it right now, but we're not using it. You see, I can barely get it out my mouth to y'all. You Think about it. Think about it. We're not using it. I want people that are listening to this right now to mull this over and think about it. And then come back and figure out what the game plan should be to start making the industry do what we want them to do. We are not collectively standing together and creating our projects in such a way that it's going to help all of us. And we're going to come back <clears throat> with that with Ella Joyce and we're going to talk a little Amazing, bit more. Amazing, my sister. You know, oh my God. Wow. Um, Real talk. Real you know, talk. You know Real it's talk. my bread and butter. You know I what say I'm that. saying? It's my bread and butter. Yeah. I know how I eat. Ella, you know, we've had lots of actors here. I, I, and I would bet you you've done as many interviews. But I would bet next month's rent on the fact that we've got a very special interview here from you tonight. Man, you're not going nowhere, I hope. <laughs> no, we I'm got something that. even Bill Maher probably couldn't have pulled out Ooh. of you. Well, so let's, you uh, you is speaking on it. I'm okay. telling you. We're, we're going to take a quick break. Wow. And, um, Got to pay the bills. Right. Well, we totally appreciate you. Um, and your, like I said, I, you know, your wisdom is is so incredible. It's incredible. I you love know, it. on a whole I'm, other I'm, level. I'm, I'm very quiet right now. I'm just like, um, I'm just like sucking it all up. Just like, wow. Well, and, and we all should. I thought this it's conversation was going to be like, well, when I started out at 12, I first mm. went to New York and my mama took me to dance in this play and. This is some whole other level right, stuff. Right, this is my friend. I talked to her, but I'm still like, still like this. Absolutely fascinating like, wow. dialogue. I got yeah, to I love it. It's got me mesmerized because yeah. he's speaking on it. So, Miss Joyce, we're going to take a quick break. Once again, we thank you for this Please information. We also have Ernest you know, Harden coming um, up. And thank you for the jazz you're playing in the background. Oh, you know, I'm yeah. digging it, man. This I'm is, digging it. Yeah, this is def definitely for you. I'm digging it. Uh, yeah, we do have definitely have uh, Ernest Harden Jr. Mm -hmm. coming up uh, in a couple of seconds, too, as well. More, but, more history and, as well. I'll, I'll bet he's well-primed right now. He more wants history. To get in. He's we, chomping at we the We got to get y'all right both now. together, you know, but at the same time, we got to get him in because, you know, this information is... is 
is what the shock factor is all about here every Friday at 8 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. But we try, you know, what we do, we don't try. But we do, do, you know, we talk about these particular issues so we can educate people on us coming together. You know, and that's the bottom line of coming together and working efficiently without all the hate. You know, I know there's been a lot of program hate in us. It's a psychological trauma. And we have to, you know, get beyond that and, you know, and reach for the things that we want out of our lives. You know, collectively. Is, so, look, we're gonna go take a quick break. And this go is ahead. coming from a you know a strong black woman in the industry as well, speaking on this. You know what I mean? So, Major history. So we got to get kudos and big ups to that. Most big definitely. Props. Major props to that sister. So love we'll, it. we'll be and right back. All right. With more shock factor here in a minute, guys. Yes, sir. This is L.A. Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Hello, this is Raphael Cohen Bakri, and you are listening to His to Your Health on L.A. Talk Live. Hi, this is Don Christie inviting you to join me Every Friday, 1 p.m. Pacific, for my all-new show, The Dawn Christie Show. Join me as I discuss love, spiritual readings, your purpose, why am I born, what am I here to do. So don't forget to tune in The Dawn Christie Show at 1 p.m. Pacific, exclusively on L.A. Talk Live. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B or watch us on Ustream TV, Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is L.A. Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hi, I'm Ro Williams, and I would like to invite you to join GospelRhythms.com every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our show, GospelRhythms.com Talk Live Radio. Join us as we celebrate Christians around the world in all genres of entertainment, as well as highlight interest stories on men and women who are making a difference and impacting their community. So don't forget to tune in to GospelRhythms.com Talk Live Radio exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes under R&B or watch us live on Ustream TV. We are reality radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is GospelRhythms.com Talk Live Radio on LATalkLive.com. We're more than just talk. We're heaven's party here on earth. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Mondo here to tell you all about LA Talk Live's new indie rock talk show, Band with Mondo, where I'll be hosting the show with a new band every Saturday from 3 to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, starting September 1st. So tune in to Band with Mondo every Saturday from 3 to 4 p.m. here on LA Talk Live. We're more than just talk. Hello, I'm Joel Ramirez. And I'm Lolita Robinson Coppage, and welcome to Joy in My House on LATalkLive.com. Inspirational radio with a touch of recovery. A reality show where nothing is left unsaid, and no one is insignificant who says it. 
exclusively on latalklive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B or watch us on Ustream TV. Reality Radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live and we are more than just talk.
Yeah, yeah. Welcome back to the Shock Factor here on LA Talk Live. We got a, an incredible conversation going on here in the studio right now. And, you know, we didn't... <laughs> It's, it's, it's getting amped up right here. I want to let y'all know. I want to welcome everybody back to the Shock Factor. Uh, like I said, we got a great conversation going on today. Um, and look, this conversation is so needed um, that the, and this is why I love doing what I do. And I love, you know, every Friday, you know, when I meet people with such esteem, with thoughts, you know, not just what they've done in their career, but what they, who they are and what they're about, their energy and their passions. And they talk about what they're passionate about. When they start talking about that, I love that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I want to thank, you know. Survive, baby. Uh, once again, Miss Ella, Miss Ella Joyce um, that has blessed us um, with her passion. And love, and and also I want to welcome to our our panel uh, Ernest Harden Jr. Uh, uh, Superman, uh, thank you. Uh, who's done, Superman. Who's done such you know such a lot, and I and I was just saying to so him much. earlier when I was just watching him, watching both of them while I was I was growing up, like wow man to have them here right now. And, and the passion and, and he energy. was on the Jefferson <laughs> right. and Good Times. He was on all of them as a young baby. A young baby. Yeah. Yeah. A, young baby. Yeah. a lot of people was, don't even know that. I yeah. was blessed to be on that FCC like network thing, network. channel yes. to it. It wow. was great. Yeah. You was still great. get them good residuals now, don't you? Well, they down to about 20 somewhere. cents a check That's okay now. because they come in. Yeah, they come right. in. You know what I always tell people? <laughs> Uh, they not gonna let you out the store if you twenty cents short on your groceries. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so right. that twenty cent, as it's long as it's up. coming in, yeah, it's, it's okay. Good. You can get out that store. No, no, that was a, that was truly a blessing. I mean, what, what, <clears throat> and Ella, I've been listening to this conversation. It, it's just amazing because I was getting ready to say, well, you know, I started in junior high school. <laughs> 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 And it no, turned out. We, we get, get it in. We get it in. It's a shock factor, baby. You know, we love you. We can Google it all that. Let's get we you actually, some of your passions. Both of us are from Detroit, though. Yes, all the known. Detroit, me and Ernest. All three, all three of us. All three, oh, all three of us. Oh, okay. Dre Rowe, West Warren, and Tommy. Oh, from no. the D. Yeah. Chassis High School, baby. The D. Purging High School. I used to play against y'all. Cast Tech. All right. I'm a Cast Technician. Cast Technician. The Pickle Factory. I was on the cheer team. The Pickle Factory. And I uh, was voted most popular and girl with the most school spirit. I'm she, right. She's a smart girl. <laughs> she's a, hey, Cass Tech, they. they you All know, smart people he, go to Cass. You know what's so funny? My father went to Morehouse. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you a little quick story. Please. And he says, thank he you. came, and this is the attitude that Cass Tech had. My father was sitting in, they, they wanted to go to Wayne. He wanted to try to get his master's at Wayne State University. Right. So he was sitting there, and this guy from Cass Tech was talking to him. And he was saying, oh, man, Cass is this, and Cass is so bad. And, and we're one of the best in the country, and we, ba 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 He went on and on. My father said, wow, that's, a, that's amazing. So then the guy came out <clears throat> and said, okay, <clears throat> everybody who wants to um, come and uh, who are coming here for their master's, please sit over here. And, uh, you know, all undergrads still over there. So <laughs> father got up and because he was going there for his master's. Right. And he looked at the guy. The guy didn't get up. He said, what? Oh, Cass Tech is a high school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We said, brag about the achievers that graduated from Cass, baby. But the you way know. they the way they, oh, yeah, they, they, yeah, they got it at too, but they bad. Right. We got overachievers. Them. Everybody, everybody yeah. from Lily Tomlin, she Michigan. was a cheerleader, too. They go to Michigan wow. State. To um, <laughs> um, Ellen Burstyn, to Congressman <laughs> John Conyers, to Diana wow. Ross. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Peter Baker, mm. uh, David Allen Greer, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we, and you, we yeah, and me Joyce. too, yeah. me too, we boast a lot of my brother achievers went there. that my brother went there. Yeah. My yeah. sister is the uh, head of music over there. Yeah, oh, yeah? music. Yeah, she got her PhD from Northwestern, mm. and uh, wow. she came back, she says, she did some stuff like she and not uh, Northwestern High School, y'all. No, no, <laughs> Northwestern <laughs> University, but she, but she, um, 
I did some conducting for the Detroit Symphony yeah. and, okay. and the, the Chicago Orchestra. Symphony. Wow. Oh, wow. And then, but she said, hey, I went back to Cass Tech in the school system. I made more money, so I stayed there. Wow. Yeah, and Cass was that overachiever type of school. You had to have a grade point average to yes. even get in yeah, the school. Exactly. And then you had to maintain it to stay there. It's one of the smart so schools. So if it, your grade ever fell down below what that average was supposed to maintain, there. they kicked you out and you had to go to your neighborhood high school. Yep. Right. I graduated you had to go to out of my curriculum. Right, you had to go to Persian and Chad. Performing arts right. curriculum. Right. Right. How dare me, <laughs> Mr. Harden? Let me ask you a question. What What made you get into acting? Like, what? Why? You know, what? Well, I started in junior high school, though. No, because no. <laughs> I want to ask you. No, actually, it was it was so weird. And I did start at an early age. I was. Uh, you know, I like two things. I like athletics. You know, like hey, in my neighborhood, I came in from the actually Steve from the Smith, hood, Persian. From the yeah, but I was before. Steve I know Smith. that. But my partners were Spencer Haywood. Oh man, oh, I remember Spencer, Spencer oh, Haywood and he Ralph Simpson. Bad. If you heard of Ralph Simpson, mm -hmm. he yeah. went and he had an illustrious career at Denver yeah. uh, as a right. pro. Right. And uh, matter of fact, Ralph and, and I were, like, Spencer best Haywood. Friends. Uh, and Spencer, he, a, he was a little ahead of me, but I knew Spencer. We were all, you know, we right. were all cool. Because I, I hooped the chassis. I hooped. You know? Oh, really? Yeah, I was a, ball I I was a PSL chassis. ball player. Oh, okay. I remember yeah. chassis. Well, I was a cheerleader. Saint Cecilia, I played at St. Cecilia. We, I was, had I Will was, we, were, we were considered the Foxy 10. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was one of the Foxy yeah, Ten you sure cheerleaders. Was. You still are. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, baby. Still, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, baby. You still are Foxy. <laughs> Number Foxy one in my book. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was watching your show back in the day, it's like, oh my gosh. She's you know, so hey, you oh, and everybody you, else. Sweetheart. You know, she mm. she uh she plays. She has a one woman show that she does at Rosa Parks. It's yeah, dope. It's I incredible. did it for about five years. I was um out there doing it. I've been off of it for about a year right now because the movies had picked up a little bit where I couldn't keep it on my schedule. But I'll be going back to it. And uh, people could go to um, www.arosamongthorns.com. Mm -hmm. The name of my show was A Rose Among Thorns, a tribute to Rosa Parks. It was dope. And um, mm -hmm. uh, I did it for about five years. I took it around the country to various places. Uh, I would go into rural schools. I went down into Alabama to three of the rural areas like Fort Deposit and Lounsdale and wow. places people had never heard of. And uh, the kids were so grateful. They just loved it. The teachers were like, girl, I'm going to tell my kids about anything your name is on because don't nobody think about us down here, <laughs> you know. But And, and to bring such it's a crazy, classy right? show. But, uh, you know, I, I felt it was my responsibility because when she passed in 2005, which... Her anniversary of her passing was yesterday, October 24th, mm. 2005, mm -hmm. is when she passed. And um, they were putting a lot of misinformation about her out there, mm. you know, referring to her as a tired maid, which is totally wrong. You know, right. she was a seamstress, uh, which shows a bit of education, exactly. okay, because whose clothes was she sewing at right. the Mayfair department store in downtown Montgomery? Wow. White folk, okay? Yeah, no so, but they want to play her up as being this maid who was tired and uneducated and she was anything but that. So I put this one woman show up. It was about an hour and 15 minutes and I took it around to various schools and different places and uh, for about five years and it was my way of giving back and I just I really appreciated the experience because we met so many wonderful people mm. people that uh, may have known her may have crossed paths with her yeah. um, she ended up in Detroit right yeah, yeah. she from Detroit you know she, she, of course she's from her. Alabama I from rode the Montgomery. elevator with her by myself I was you taking did? my brother I was taking my brother to get he had broke his uh, wrist or thumb or something when he was in Detroit I was taking him to uh, the hospital. I was dropping him off in the front while I go park the car. Mm -hmm. You know, so as I park, I'm going to get on the elevator. This lady's on the elevator. So it was a couple of people on there at first with us. Then they got off. So it was just me and her on the elevator. So I turned to hug her, right? And I was like, Miss Parks, I'm just so overwhelmed to meet you. And I hugged her. And she said, no, 
right? It was too late as I was already hugging her. <laughs> and then I let her go and I, I told her, I said, I, I totally apologize because it was around the time that, uh, uh, rest in peace to her as well, but it was around the time when that guy had broken her house and yeah, beat her skip up. Her. And beat skip her. Her. Really? You know yeah, Skipper. Really? Yeah, he beat and, her. And, so, and she was going to get a checkup, you know, from that moment at the hospital and hit my big old black self on the mm -hmm. elevator with her. And I just was like, I just went yeah. to hug her. And she was like, no, 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 no. it was too late. I was already hugging her. During and I, and the I research. Told her, I, said, I said, I'm here to protect you, yeah. man. Mm -hmm. Way before I would hurt you. During I mean, the research that I had done when I was putting the piece together, I found <clears> out from a lot of intimate people that she was never quite the same after that I can guy. imagine. Mm. Because Peter I tell you, what, I, and I, I recognize that because as I'm on the elevator with her, yeah, uh, I forgot what how, we was at receiving, I think. I was taking my brother receiving. I forgot which hospital we were in. But uh, like I said, I went to hug her because I just instinct. This Rosa Parks. Oh, man, went to hug her. And she was already yeah. saying no. She was too sensitive. And um, she was already, and I said, and I, told, and I already that, understood yeah, that. I, I mean, instantly, I read fragile. I'm like, see, we're in the hospital. She, yeah. I know she's getting a checkup. This yeah. just recently happened to her maybe like two months ago. So I said, I said, Miss Parks, I totally understand. I said, I apologize. I said, but I'm here to. I said, I will protect you to no end before I ever. Think well, you know, in Detroit, we claim Rosa Parks because Man, uh, when I was a little girl, mm. um, they renamed 12th Street Rosa Parks Boulevard. That mm -hmm, was where the mm -hmm. 67 riots came out. Right. Of. But uh, they renamed that street after her, Rosa Parks Boulevard. So she lived the second half of her life. In Detroit. Because she lived until she was 92. Right. So uh -huh. she lived the first half of her life, of course, in Montgomery, Alabama. But then the second half of her life All was lived Detroit. in our city, in mm -hmm. Detroit. So there's a big, beautiful portrait of her in, in the airport, a mirror. Mm -hmm. of her up at the airport with all the great people out of Detroit mm -hmm. that are up there, and they've got a beautiful well, painting of yeah, her. She's, I was a, she's definitely a national treasure. Go ahead, Mr. Hurt. No, no, no. I was going to say I was fortunate enough to meet her, too. Wow. I, uh, we, uh, Aretha Franklin, well, her family is kind of From like, Detroit, from yeah. Detroit. I was in Detroit, and Aretha Franklin was singing a particular night at, um, what is it? It wasn't the music hall. It was some other hall back there now. It's, the Sonic uh, Temple? Uh, no, the Fox. The Fox. It wasn't the Fox. Like the State Theater. The State Theater. It, it was one of those. Things. Oh, no. It, it sounded like the music hall, but it was mm -hmm. a it was a new hall, and uh, she was doing a tribute. All they talking about. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, and so her family invited me, so we were backstage, and I got to meet mm -hmm. her. It was a blessing. Mm -hmm. It was off Woodward. Yeah, exactly. Off and Woodward. I never got to meet her, but I, you know, portrayed her through the research and the love of my research mm -hmm. because it was. You were great, by the oh, way. Oh, thank you. All day long. Yeah, I he, saw it. He, thank it you, darling. Great. They graced me with their presence at my show. But mm -hmm. I, it, it, it was mm. something that I felt, you know, I always felt that her spirit just sort of lighted down on us whenever I began to tell that story because it's history. Mm -hmm. And what it does in telling the story again and again, it keeps the truth of our history alive. There were a lot of kids that would come up to me afterwards and tell me because they loved the place so much, mm -hmm. they actually went back and delved into reading about mm -hmm. her and all of the other important people mm -hmm. of that era that they didn't know because I had her mentioning names of people that we should know right. and we don't know. Like well, she the was the mother of the Civil Rights Movement. 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 Right. One of the staples. Yeah. One of the staples of it. <laughs> right. You know? So I, had them, I, had, I would mention names that they would go and look like Professor Joanne Robinson and E.D. Nixon. All of these were important people that our kids should know. They mm -hmm. should know how important they were. To, to why their lives are the way they are. Why mm. whatever you think freedom is, why you have it now. Right. Why you're not sitting in the back of the bus. Why you're not drinking out of a dirty water fountain. Exactly. Why, you let, know. Let, me, let me just say, and I, I apologize, but you know, when, and when we speak about those things, it's like, for me, <clears throat> and you know, being of a younger of the next. And didn't have to experience that. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and didn't have mm -hmm. to experience it at all. And when I look at it, you know, it's like, you know, people, you know, begging for freedom, right? And you don't know the conditions, you know, somebody's either die or I'm going to maim you or, you know, cut you up or hang you. Kill you. Or and, huh. and stuff burn like that. You. Kill you, torture you. you. dogs on you. But, yeah. But can you imagine the psychological discourse that we must have? As a people. Mm -hmm. That is if, what's wrong with us today. You if, know, 
I just came from the DGA the other day, mm -hmm. and um, I, you know, I should be promoting my own movies, but I got to talk about this other movie I just saw, Twelve Years a Slave. Did oh, you yeah, see yeah, that? Yeah. Um, yeah, Lupita is Brad in it. Pitch I don't want right. to try to say her last name in Dunko. I, I don't want to try to say it because I can't pronounce it correctly. But she understudied me when I was at um, Yale doing this play called The Bossa Nova uh, by Kirsten Greenwich about five years ago. Mm. She was a young student coming up. Her performance is incredible in this film. But what this film does is it really, truly shows the emotional scars that we still have today. Oh, it shows it. you really why we got, excuse my French, assholes, mm -hmm. like we do, mm -hmm. wanting to keep health care from you, mm -hmm. wanting to keep any opportunity at all from you, mm -hmm. wanting to keep anything that even resembles equality from you kind of all these crazy people on the airways talking all this hatred you know and, and what they don't want to say is that they are the descendants of these slave masters exactly. that's who they are they and everybody need to go see that movie mm -hmm. did you what, what what did you guys think about the butler real quick i don't want to talk about I just don't want to talk about that. I haven't seen it yet. You haven't, haven't seen it? Well, I haven't. It's I not in I my realm of I told I, I, right. I, I, I Let me tell you, it. I totally prejudged it. Let me tell you why I prejudged it. I'm thinking there's going to be some shoe shuffling, whatever going on. I know it's on. a good film. But I, don't, I, I, I know what by Forrest being in it, I, don't think, I would never think it would be some shoe shuffling. I, I, thought it was I gonna, know it's mm, a great film. I thought it was going to be some Forrest shoe is, shuffling. But I saw the play. I saw, mm. uh, I saw a friend of mine did the one-man play at mm -hmm. the Pasadena Playhouse many years ago. It was called Looking Over the President's Shoulder. Mm -hmm. And so I learned everything about that butler through mm -hmm. my friend John Henry Redwood that did the play. Yeah. And so I, just, I, I will get around to seeing it. You Let me know, tell you, but my, I know it's a wonderful film. It was so, it, the paradigm in there was this, right? Now, somebody telling you you can't do something and they putting you under these conditions. Or you allowing them to. That's what we, we allow somebody to uproot us and put us in a search circumstance or a situation, and this is what it is. But uh, after all this and all that, the sheer arrogance of the Caucasian race, right, to allow uh, black people to sit there and listen to every fucking conversation that was most important throughout those those, those years. Mm -hmm. So imagine this. You're hearing you with Kennedy, you with this Roosevelt, you with you know Nixon, mm -hmm. and you're hearing these conversations mm -hmm. right. about and, them yeah. getting your people yeah. one. Yeah. Them saying nigga, <laughs> nigga, 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 uh -huh. all like all, all that, mm -hmm. right? Right. Mm -hmm. And you're hearing this and you're the fly. On, on the, the wall. wall. And right. what predates that is slavery. <laughs> exactly. What predates that is 12 years <laughs> of slavery. slavery. But what, that, what that does is shows you why 200 years later it's like that. Oh, I got to see that. It's more modern. And that's why you got to see that. No, it, it, it tells, takes you, know, you back to And what I really liked about the film is that you're seeing it through the eyes of a free black man, an intelligent black man. So now you can't even argue with his perceptions of things. You have to look at that. It's hard to watch. Yeah. It's hard to watch. Let me tell you, but it needs to be seen. Um, <laughs> I, I went to go see it because, you know, Lupita, I know her personally, and she did such a fabulous, um, wonderful job. But I just say, you know, God bless Brad Pitt for making that movie. Yeah. Because oh, it's Brad's movie, actually, huh? Yeah, well, he's one of the executive he's producers it. Oh, on really? it, so you know, know that's how it got made, and 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 there are a lot of you know actors that show up in it. But what it does is it shows you so much without telling you. All you have to do is deduce it for yourself, right? As to why we are where we are today, mm -hmm. the illness, if you have any the substance. poison mm. that started in our people that made uh, all of us, not just blacks that are the, the victims, white people are victim of 
um, racism like the and the psychological yeah, uh, supremacy, yeah. white supremacy that they created, they're victim of it too. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're big victim. They're more of a victim of it even than we are because look at how we were able to rise above everything that they stopped us from doing. Mm -hmm. or, and yet they're more of a victim because they can't love us freely. They can't marry us freely. They can't, they can't do anything freely with us without feeling guilt about what they've done to us, mm -hmm. you know, and we need to see, the, and also the dichotomy between the white woman and the black woman. Mm. That's a it whole really show. That, and that's, that's, that's in 12 Years a Slave. Hey, they man. bravely man. dealt with that, I, baby. I, 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 and Lupita <laughs> with her pretty black self. And I'm talking pretty according to any man's yeah. standard. I don't yeah. care who you are. Yeah. You look at this ebony black skin beauty and you begin to understand what the black woman's struggle has been. And it's been a struggle. Why they was, getting, why they was walking up in them shacks. Why they was walking back in them shacks. Struggle back in them has late been. Night. <laughs> and the beauty between why the jealousy is there. You know, why there's so much backlash against the best and the most beautiful yeah. of some of our actual not going on screen with the white women. Well, it's it's one of those things with the eye candy. It's it's one of those <laughs> things that you know. And the Peter is eye candy. Have you come back? And we're gonna definitely, you know, talk about that. You know, and speaking about the the the, the discourse that we didn't had in our you know community. We talk about the Jeffersons, right? Man, and the spun off of you know. From all in the family. Of all in the family and the <coughs> Bunker family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and the racism that, you know, and how I think, I don't, I don't think I've heard, I think he maybe was the first, I don't know, that was on so-called major networks and a black, a little, you know, Sherman Hemsley right. calling old boy hunky and doing now, all this. Let me tell you something. Right. Like, <laughs> the, the, I love me some Jeffersons <laughs> now, okay? <laughs> when the Jeffersons come on, Man. oh, we're moving on up. Man. <laughs> everybody in the house got shut up. Yeah, and believe. everybody in the house is just my husband. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he know, he like, oh, Lord, you on the Jeffersons marathon, ain't you? <laughs> oh, yeah, baby, I love me some Jeffersons. Yeah, you Jeffersons. know, it was like, it was, one back in the day, see, it wasn't all the cable mm -mm. and everything. If you won one of those shows, you were like, you, you was know, it. yeah, you were pretty high. I remember my mother telling me, "Oh wow, you finally made it to the Jefferson." <laughs> 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 We got a picture just like that in our house. Yeah. Yeah. That was a uh, pride and joy. But you got to know how excited I was, you know, when you talk about what you grew up looking at mm -hmm. and what, what, what filled you with whatever joy you could get for 30 minutes right. to not look at the misery of your own life like that and more. be able to laugh. You, you got to understand what it was like for me in this business when I got to meet Marla Gibbs. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love her. Mm -hmm. She's our treasure. All day long. Beautiful. You know, and she's still here with us You're she's here. so talented every time I she made me her. laugh so much and every you time know, i see her i hug her it's only a few of us her. left actually yes. it, it, right you know yes. because i mean uh paul benedict uh, uh -huh. y'all work with it's you gone. work with some greats y'all work oh, they some great uh, paul benedict franklin culver who was upstairs with married to roxy roker exactly yes son is uh, lenny, uh, kravitz. lenny kravitz exactly. Exactly. i used to see little lenny all the time man listen to this and he played it i say oh yeah that's gonna be good man but i already say i'm a rhythm and blues man myself right that's gonna be good and later on hey okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. what can i say but uh and uh then you you think about who was the doorman just died oh he did ralph Ned, the doorman Ned, Ned, he yeah did. Ned, i didn't Ned, know Ned, that Ned, Ned, yep he, he died. died he died probably about like seven eight months ago oh, wow. um uh, you let's see who else um all of them they're pretty much gone but it's just me marla and Marla. Marla. Marla and um, the girl who played Jenny. What uh, about the Lionel? What about the both Lionels? And one of the Lionels <laughs> died. Which one? Oh. The first Lionel the, died. The brown, the brown skinned one, the darkest one. Oh, the yeah. earlier one. The uh, earlier one. Mike the Evans. One, yeah. Mike, Mike Evans. Evans and then Mike then, Evans. Uh, Damon Evans is in Europe somewhere. So it's just and, and see, that's the other little game I like yeah, to play in terms of with our folks, especially when I'm with young folks and we watch TV or the movies together. Right. I like to... You know, watch them and see all these great people when they were young show up. Mm -hmm. Ask them, now, what's their names? 
Right, right, right. by right. their names, not their character names. Exactly. Yeah. Their acting mm-hmm. name because, you know, in our culture, because of the way it is, we can call all these great white actors. Right. Uh-huh. But we got all these <laughs> wonderful <laughs> black people whose well, faces are familiar to us, yeah. and Is, we cannot they call them name. by their name. Isabel Sanford and okay. so Sherman Hemsley. So, you know, I mean, from... Uh, 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 all these actors that showed up on a regular basis and then when you see them I oh God. and that's why I love watching Good Times that's why I love watching the Jeffersons and I love watching because some of those people are alive now and they've gone off to become great stars right. yeah. mm-hmm. you know but the ones that aren't the big stars you know necessarily but we know them as character actors right and we can't say their name that's true right. that's true mm-hmm. we can't say their Lawrence name Lawrence jacobs you know yeah mm-hmm. and we should be able to call them by Julius name J. Carey the people third, need to know you mike know, evans up. mike evans was the first lionel mm-hmm. he was bad evans, and he did mike a lot evans. of writing well actually you see yeah, his he, name roll up as the writers on the show he helped create that show he yeah. was one of the writers, and people uh, don't know, know that. Their whole thing and I was saw that name a lot of times. Give him Mike him a Evans need to know him. They he, wanted to give him a family him. through, um, through from all in the family, and that's why they developed the Jeffersons. Came wow. from Mike Evans. That's why he kind of had an attitude with them when it was sort of like the show was not going the way he felt it was supposed to go. Right, and. Uh, so kind of left, and they brought the other uh, Lionel in. Lionel oh, in. That's, I never knew that. That's a problem. great history. Yeah, and then he had a problem with them because he wanted to do, he wanted to do opera on the show and all of that. Uh, they didn't want to do that. that. Right, that would have He fit. was a singer as well. <laughs> right, and so then that broke up. That brought my character in Marcus. They, but right. they, they Marcus. decided, yeah, Marcus okay, Mr. Henderson. Jefferson. Right, yeah, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> hey, Mr. Jefferson, and, man. You know what? Well, so yeah, you had, but you, I'm going to tell you something. You had an afro that, 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 we, that we wanted to have. It, you know, it was carved yeah. around, you know what I'm saying? Oh, man, yeah. The nice that's the afro to the fro. That's the afro yeah. to get all the girls right there. Yeah. Y'all was that yeah. to get the girls, dude. That was so funny. I had to run. Who and was that, that actress you were supposed to, you wanted to marry on the Jeffersons? She was You know, I know which one you're talking about. I forgot her name. Gosh, yeah. She showed up a couple of times on some of them shows. Mm-hmm. We got character a, actor. We got another special lady that just yes, stepped in the house. And I want I want to acknowledge this lady right here because this is the lady who brought me into this station. You know, the reason why that I'm here right now. We have Miss Brooks Collier in the house. Jackson in the house. Brooks Jackson. Brooks Jackson, Brooks Jackson, Brooks Jackson in the house. Yeah, and you know, don't matter. She's she the one that brought me in here on her show, Necessary Conversation, and uh, she's now here. Yeah. All right, she's here on, on our show, you know. Yeah. Now, I'm I remember when she first show, started now. doing it. I remember I when she know. first started and I am, doing I'm it. Busting at you because you haven't come back. You've been so busy. Yes. Mm. Uh, well, they caught me on my clear moment. <laughs> Rocky <laughs> caught me on my clear moment while I was in town. I got it. Because yes. I'm getting ready to leave town again. When are you leaving? I'll be leaving probably, well, we're waiting to hear. Okay. It'll either be in a week or two. Perfect, because Sunday is. Um, I'm doing my first fundraiser. Hey, Shot Kim. Hey, Brooks. <laughs> I want to thank you once again. Let me give you another one because you know I love you. I love <laughs> Brooks. <laughs> Brooks, baby. This is the Brooks. lady you know. This is the lady to know. The oh, lady of here of LA Talk Live. You know, yes. we want to give her mad love. Thank she got you. an event that's going on this weekend. I want, I want her to talk about it a little bit too as well. We have these incredible guests dropping I wisdom, see. and this I know they. This this is your click. This is your this is your people. This is my people, <laughs> right? <here. laughs> yeah. This is your people this here. Is my people. I brought my daughter with me. And too. I see. Hey. Oh, hi. Hi. Okay. I, I, can't even hey. see that was over there. I thought that was your beautiful sister. It is my beautiful sister. Yes, it is. <laughs> you know, I am working <laughs> under go, uh, right? <laughs> working under duress. I had some oral surgery, so I'm missing teeth right here. So oh, I'm gonna be kind of talking girl. like hey. this all night. But, they just um, finished on me and oh, I'm I'm wind. shining right now <laughs> <laughs> but I know what it's like I went through that for a year oh yeah. no mm-hmm, a year well, anyway I told my doctor speed it up I talk for a living so I can't you know, yeah. do this. but we have this amazing event um over the past year I formed my own nonprofit. Mm-hmm. it's called when w-i-n-d women in need of direction wow and what we do is we provide emergency services for women Uh, women of domestic abuse, women who are homeless, whatever, you know, whatever you need. That's what we are trying to be the resource because too many times um, women of domestic abuse have nowhere to go and so they end up going back 
into the <coughs> abusive situation. So our fundraiser this week is at the Comedy Union. It's Sunday, 6 p.m. to 9. Um, it's called No Reason to Return. Sweet. And so we have an amazing comedy lineup. Um, Ms. Coco Brown is headlining. Um, Kalita Smith is our host. Oh, okay. Yeah, so just the two of them together, you know, is Yeah, enough. that's hysterical. <coughs> uh -huh. Coco, she crazy. She <laughs> is, but then we have some comedians, uh, Sexy Marlowe, of course, yeah. uh, Vanessa Graddick, and Treze. They will be, you know, just bringing down the house. Cookie's not on that show? Cookie is not on that show because they're all working for free, and I couldn't afford to bring her from... Uh, way out where the hell she is. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. So she'll be on probably the next show. And then Deanna will be closing the show with a final tribute. So okay. really? it's going to be an awesome show. Can we show. get a preview? A pre well, hey, we will know. Well, you know, I still need you to find that song. <laughs> like, okay. Uh, uh, if no, I I, maybe I should have asked Richard. Can I get a preview if I find it? Yes well, or no? who are you talking to? Oh. Me or her? Her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Richard, Richard, you have to bear with for me. I usually never turn down opportunities. <laughs> right? Right. Right. But I want to be ready for Sunday and I'm just getting over it. Uh-huh. So, okay. Can you translate okay. for us? We couldn't hear that. Okay. Okay. She said we'll talk to you in a little while for this show. she All never right. misses an opportunity to sing, however, she wants to be ready for Sunday and she's just getting over a little something so she's okay. gonna pass this this time well, well you, I got you, you, you know what um, I'll have that for you before you guys uh, leave up out of here in the next couple of seconds I'll make sure I give you a copy of that well all right then I know Ah. Hey, exactly. That's how you're supposed to do it. If you ain't ready, don't make it. You don't might as well just come up here and get a chair and come uh, yeah. up here by your mama. You just felt, I'll stay ready. You know, the, Thank uh, you, I remember Glenn Terman told me, you stay ready so you don't have, you have to, to get, get ready. ready. Believe that. You know, and Believe I'm that. like, yeah, uh, that's what I'm trying to do. So anyway. Yeah. But stay anyway, ready, Sunday we yeah. are going to be making Looking it like happen Brooks's. over at the Comedy <laughs> Union. And the tickets are only $20. And for anyone who's listening or watching, if you can't make it and you just want to make a donation, do that because there's some women in our program that we would like to be there. Mm -hmm. And your, t your donation could buy a ticket for them. So okay. that's Sunday at 6, no reason to return, where we are bringing awareness to domestic violence. All right. And that's right. what it's all about. At the Comedy Union. Comedy that's what it's all about. You know, Brooks, we were sitting there talking about, you know, uh, the the... Black, I don't want to call it black film or anything, but I, just the black consciousness about the film industry, uh, the TV industry today, you know, and what people went through in their lives before. You know, even just maybe there was just one, the Jeffersons, when that came on. You know, we only had one or two, maybe, and like the Jeffersons, Good Times. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. else was? Uh, wasn't that much, honey. No, it wasn't that wasn't. much. So, like, and, when, and when you listen to it and look at the psychological things that was going on, you know, when you look at the, for instance, Good Times, you listen to the song, and you talk about Good Times in the ghetto, mm -hmm. right? Look, you know, we were psychologically being, you know, programmed. You know, oh for God, we never what we they were never doing got out. too. We but what, what you need to understand too is that it was an expression of what our experience was at that, at that time. time. Exactly, exactly. You I know, so that. America that you know right now is not the America that, that it was not then. At all. The reason why you have the freedoms and the 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 free space. To think the way you do is because of the debt that those people pay Absolutely. in breaking those doors. So what that show did was express the angst that so many of us were feeling whose lives was centered around what was considered the ghetto. Mm -hmm. The fact that, I mean, for instance, me coming up in Detroit. We were the third black family in our neighborhood who moved out of the projects. Mm -hmm. So I was faced with a lot of blatant racism as a child. You know, can you imagine going to a Catholic school and being the third 
black child in an all-white class and the third black family in the neighborhood. And we're talking back before there were any kind of sanctions to Mm -hmm. protect you. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, where people... I saw a cross when now I, I came out of Detroit and Chicago. I came claim both cities as my hometown because my grandmother lived in Chicago, so we were there enough. My great grandmother was out of Chicago. I saw the first black KKK cross burned on a lawn when I was eight years old in Cicero in Chicago on the news. You know, I experienced this as a child with a black family moving into Cicero, which was a white suburb, and white people saying, go home, nigga. Mm -hmm. And you seeing it everywhere. And my great-grandmother, who her name was Ella, and she was a, her mother was um, a freed slave. She was my Mm great-grandmother. And I remember her sitting there telling me, that's what she get for moving into them white folks' neighborhood because they hate you. They hate you. Well, she was a domestic cook for white folk mm. all her life. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so she taught me so much about what life was like. So when you see those shows, you know, I, I, I have to make sure I let young people know, don't put them down. Because those shows were representing where we were in time. Let me just say this, and I, and I don't <clears throat> want to cut you off, but and I totally agree. And, and I wasn't trying to put them down, mm-hmm. but what I was trying to do is this. This is what white people thought we were at that time. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because they were writing it. Because they, were, they were writing it. Not only that, but they owned it. And they, they're the ones who tell us what our visions what are. Our they yeah. like, mm-hmm. they you know, vision. <laughs> you know, of, of us. Right. That was how you we know. were portrayed in their minds. So that's what you they see, were going to put how, on television. You see how, how the only exactly. time... And the reason like we enjoyed it so much was because there was nothing yeah. that showed nothing our life. Yeah, exactly. right. So nothing there was else. nothing... That, not that there wasn't anything else, because there were. There was Julia... Okay, where you showing yeah, Diane, Diane Carroll, Carroll as an upclass nurse, yeah. but we did the same thing with that that we did with the Cosby. That's not representing that ain't us. That representing for real. us, right? Okay, wow. but it did. It represented certain <laughs> aspects of our life, but the life that we knew in the ghetto, in the projects where we came out, like Donnie Hathaway writing the ghetto, mm-hmm. talking, we understood that. Mm -hmm. Because there was a such thing called segregation. You were not allowed into the Mm -hmm. white life. So Mm -hmm. we created our own life. And let me tell you something. Our life was so hip. And it was so cool. And it was rocking so much (laughs) that that's why they wanted to write sitcoms for us and put us on TV. Because they loved our life. They loved our spirit. Season and song. The the fact that we were who we were in the midst of what you doing to us. Exactly. You understand. You can't do nothing but respect that. Go ahead, They can't do nothing but respect that. Go ahead, Ernest. But you know, the whole thing is also... I think one, one thing that happened with the show, you remember the father figure. Who, uh, Archie? No, no. John Amos. Uh, John Amos. Oh, good times. Oh, the good yes. times. Yeah, John Amos. They would never let him get up. They would never let him like, rise. No, I mean, <laughs> what happened was he eventually left the show because... He went rising. And they wanted to have it where, you know, the family, they wanted to show that the black family was always, the man was gone. And they didn't, and it was a big fight because, uh, yeah. and so finally they they killed him all. Yeah. Think about think about think about Walona. Think about thing. Walona. How she always, I mean, she was supposed to be like 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 the like like higher echelon. Le- I mean, lady in the projects, right? right? Always had like a decent type man with money, whatever. But she never ended up going with those guys or having a better life with those guys. She always just stayed and, right there. But one thing that was good about the Jeffersons... But they still love. Yeah, just talk. Yeah, go ahead. One thing that moving was, on up. Yeah, because they were actually trying to, to show... And the, and the guy wasn't... He wasn't, uh, you know, uh, he, he didn't have a mentality. He was military he, compared he to was was self, oh, yeah. he, he said what self he, made he, said what he could say. Oh, yeah. He would say what you can't even say what on TV today. What you can't say. Today, you, right. Well, Simon Hemsley say. was like honky. He was saying what we all wanted honky. to say right. when we was all thinking. He was he, saying and honky and back then, honky yeah. and all that kind of stuff. He dared to be really who he was. He wasn't, he represented the kind of man that he was. He made it himself. Right. 
right. he's gonna Can't do it tell his me way. Do it my way. Right. So do it. But you see, and my point that I was speaking though. about earlier is that if we did not even have those shows, even those shows, mm-hmm. we would have nothing that represents the heartache of our times. We would have no footprints that we were there because when you start looking at they old movies right now, the old white movies that they show quite a lot on TNT and all those movies, you don't see us in the 30s and the 40s no. and the 50s. It was like we didn't, didn't exist. exist. But we did. It was right Oscar there. Michelle was, was making right movies. Yes, Spencer Williams was yes, making right. movies. Right. Yeah. Black movies. Uh, what was that, that boy named Cooper? That movie? Um, I can't think of his name. But he was Gordon like Parks. one of the stars <laughs> in all of the black movies that were only being shown in the black movies. Oh, yeah. You're talking about like movies, right. like, uh, movies like uh, Jive Turkey. Those movies, movies like that Jive came Turkey. out. But you don't see them. Movie. You don't see and them. Just, and it's like our footprint never existed. It's like we were not making movies in the 30s and the 40s yeah. and the 50s, and yet we were. Can I, I saw movies can I they see were actually for black audiences. They were actually chopping down the trees for us. For them now today, for us to drive our jeeps through the promised land. Right. Can I? Can and let me just say this too. And. It's, it, it goes to this. It speaks on you know this show and what the shock factor is all about. And we do this once again every Friday here at eight o'clock a Pacific Standard Time, uh, and we get it in as much as we can because it's all about education uh, and understanding. We don't try to stand under anything. Uh, we want to understand the conditions of what's kind of going on uh, in the world today from our perspective. Me personally, I think those movies uh, and those not the people. Right, because you know, once you put it in uh, into a condition, whether it's psychologically or physically, and you can't, and you feel that there's no way out, you're gonna do whatever you gotta do. Right, right, for the most part, in your mind, and I, you know, we talked about you know some of the slavery aspects and stuff like that, but the reality of it is, is that you know, in the 20s and 30s, right, when you said was nothing was going on, we had the you know Harlem Renaissance. No, going. it was going on. What right. I'm saying no, is no, that yeah. they were not showing and it ex- on mainstream. And, and this is it was uh, considered underground. Exactly. And th- and all I want to say to that, because you're 100 percent correct, is is that that's when we had the most money in our pocket, mm. right? So when we went above ground, mm-hmm. technically, mm-hmm. right, th- we started losing because we went out of our communities. Right, with all those things. In other things, words, integration. It was called integration. Saying. Yeah. And that's and integration stopped us from doing exactly. our own thing. Yeah. Exactly. And mm-hmm. uh, patronizing because our we, own. Exactly. And then once we decided to patronize the white hotels, the white movies and everything, they absorbed all our money. <laughs> yeah. And mm-hmm. everything where we were patronizing our own began to dissipate. Mm-hmm. Our, our black dentists, our black yeah. doctors, our black hotels, mm-hmm. they, they totally went out of business during mm-hmm. integration. Exactly. So we're, so we're like we're begging for free. Mm-hmm. Like we're begging, because we have to understand understand the condition, the psychological mm-hmm. condition of us begging somebody for our freedom and to say, I want to go sit with you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's a game. Okay, I'm not going to allow you to sit with me. And if you, if you use a little kid, you're like, I'm not going to allow you to play with this toy. Right. And then, you know, what the little kid is going to do, get mad and want to play with the toy. He, that, you know, that's the psychological mm-hmm. condition that they've been preying on us. And we've been falling and for And that it. is the poison of the legacy of white supremacy. That is exactly totally. what it did to us. And it's still doing it mm-hmm. to us now. Today. Because now we have a whole young generation that doesn't know anything about their history. Oh, and yeah. doesn't no, want to. No, absolutely and don't want to. nothing no, no. about it. And don't want to. Their parents don't want to tell them. That's the sad part is that And they the fact that we didn't know. talk about it is why we found ourselves in a trick bag again. Mm-hmm. Because now the pants is all the way they down are to the holding ground. us pants accountable, the <laughs> and they want to know why they don't know. Yeah. They want to know why don't we know how important this woman Rosa Parks was that everybody from all over the world is pouring out to stand in line at her funeral. Do you realize she was the first woman? I didn't say first black woman. I said the first woman to lie in state in the Capitol Road. Under. Yes, man. Mm. Do you understand that? That's how significant 
she was and what she represented for all our people not just our people but people of the world we, we have to concur with that and let me just say this too um you know because this is very important we want to talk about the jeffersons we want to talk a little bit more with uh, ernest too as well because you know this this condition right i'm you know with the, with this new model we was talking about earlier with new media Right, we have a chance right now to get back to those old ways. And if we stay stuck in this paradigm where we got to go to them and keep on begging, mm -hmm. right? We, 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 that our mindset psychologically is is that I can't do nothing unless I go to this person and beg them for mm -hmm. some resources to get this. And thing that's done. why the thought thinking has to be like what we see a brother like Tyler Perry doing. It has to be where you have found a way to stand up on your own resources and still be a main player in the game to where they can't ignore you. So what they do now is they might make fun of him. I mean, they make fun on Saturday Night Live. Why? Because they can't ignore him. That's mm -hmm. why. Mm -hmm. That's why. Because right. they can't <laughs> ignore me making so much money. How you making all this money with our, our resources yeah. that is where we have to go we have to begin to think about standing up on our own resources and then when you do that you know like okay all of us we don't have a billion dollars but if we combine our resources exactly that combine way, them combine and make combine our them. resources and then we can we build our and own make them. studios he sold his movie you know? he sold his movies out the trunk of his car yeah. and nobody give him nothing Mm -hmm. And people have this misconception that he was given something, but he really worked from nothing. Well, I he mean, started he from the stage, from nothing. right? He taped the stage plays and sold those. Exactly. That's right. what people had exactly. at first was exactly. yeah. video yeah. copies. Yeah. 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 When I did fact. Temptation, I had fans, lots of them. I'm talking hundreds of fans that came up to me to tell me, this before the movie came out that they already knew the movie. Yeah. And they couldn't wait to go see it mm. because they, they were already his diehard fans that saw the movies the when it was a play. Mm -hmm. And they were the ones educating me, say, yeah, that was called the marriage counselor. Right. And I already yeah. know the character you're going to be playing. And right. I got my ticket already to go see the movie. <laughs> and, I, and I love it, yeah. baby. Yeah. I love it when I, I began to respect all of his fans because when I began to see they these people <laughs> have been following him yeah. all the I don't know all his movies the way they did, but they've been following him. I say, well, you doing something and you mm -hmm. touching somebody, somebody, you know somebody what? that and feel like they like what you doing. What Tyler Perry did, he took a he took a genre and he he impacted it, capitalized like he totally capitalized on the churches exactly and. He stayed within that realm, and those people and they built made him. They built him. They built him. He is now, and they do not. What you like to call the Chitlin Circuit? They, <laughs> they have hmm. sur way surpassed the Chitlin Circuit. He has black people around the world yes. waiting for his films. Yes. Right. Yes. I was in Thank Iraq. You. Thank okay, you. Okay, Kuwait. And I saw Tyler Perry, Madias, yes, everywhere, they bootlegs. Can't wait to see okay, it. wow. So he he did that himself, 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 and yeah. that is just that stick to it that he but has. I, but I and that is the attitude we need to adopt. And mm -hmm. we need to have quality product. Yeah. We need. We got to know how to come thing. together, though. We have to, we have to know how to come together. Still, we still have that problem. Still. You well, know, I mean, okay. I won't say people like us, but this is the numbers right here. You got three men, three women, so that's six strong right now. But we need more of us to be able to come together because you said putting the resources together, we're still not doing it. And we have a lot of people in position. I mean, from from the people, the small fries all the way up to the big wigs, we're still not doing it. From all these NBA players, all these NFL players, Thank all you. these, all these, and that's one of my issues everybody too. Everybody got theirs. Everybody just they got but theirs. Because they just when take you, care, they so take care of theirs. Wait a minute, minute. Take is that right. a mentality it's, 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 that's always uh, been existent between us? Because we've been talking about this for a long, for long time. time. Yeah. For a long time. I mean, but, you know, back but, when Richard Pryor had like, and, 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 and so what? So what? So what? So why? I mean, so when I talk about could it be Willie Lynch? What you just said right now, Rocky, well. about that, I, I, I have a passion about that because 
when you look at the me. NBA players and the people who have serious money, my thing is, they scared, please like, like, contribute take, to the like, arts. I think it's going to be Because when scared. you look at the they Jewish community, like, what's gonna happen when you look at the Jewish community behind. and you look but at their smart, Broadway and you look at the museums and you look at the movies and you look at everything that they continue to support, Broadway is run, it's called the Great White Way, it is supported by mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. The Schuberts, the Nederlanders. Right. <laughs> we need the NBA team mm -hmm. to buy a Broadway theater and begin <laughs> to appreciate the arts so much to understand that the arts are our footprint mm -hmm. as a people so that our black playwrights, our black writers and gifted directors and gifted actors have a place to go and continue to work. Do you know there's only one theater on Broadway named after a black man and it, on, it was only within the last few years, the August Wilson Theater, and there's never been a black play in the theater. Are you kidding? Do you understand what I'm saying? This is, this is hysterical madness. Mm -hmm. That is what that is when you stop and think about it. And nobody has ever put that together. August Wilson Theater, finally we took all this time to have one black Broadway theater, mm -hmm. and there hasn't been a black play in that theater. We need the football team, the basketball team, the baseball team, the people that are making big money to care enough about the arts to put their money back into it. That is why on Broadway, we were, all that's of why those I give a shout out. That's why I give a shout out to Ashton Springer. Rest in peace to Ashton Springer because he was a catalyst of uh, you know black uh, Broadway in New York. I don't know I mean, if you guys are familiar with the name, but Ashton Springer. Uh, okay. Let me say. Let me just say. You know, we like you know. Ernest was saying, we've been talking about this mm -hmm. for a long time. Let me, let, me keep, let me tell you why we're going to keep on talking about it. Right? Because for whatever reason, you know, we're, 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 we're still trying to please master. And, and, and go with me here right quick, and I promise to be brief, <laughs> is, is that right now, you know, we're, we don't understand that that's his monopoly. This is his monopoly board. Mm -hmm. This is his game. I created all the money. It's, I don't care about money. You care about money. But I don't care about money if I created the board. Right, I don't have a bill. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't care about the, that. I'm just using this as a tool so I can control how things flow in everyday society. Mm -hmm. So until we realize one or two things. Because we're going to always keep on talking about we need to do this. We need to do this as black folks. Until we do it. Well, not only until we do it, until we get it here, you until we believe. Man, mm -hmm. Understand and, and until believe. We do it. Until we understand. There until we again. believe. Right. The that fact that we do not have a black theater on the great white way is serious. Well, I, I mean, it's, it's it's angering to me that be. we do not have <laughs> a black theater on the great white way. Me and Ernest should be able to say right now, oh, I want to do a play on Broadway. Yeah. But we can't. But because can. we got to wait until they doing a play with a black person Bubba in it. Sugar, but we don't have to worry about And I'm not talking about a musical. Mm. I'm talking about a drama. <laughs> a I'm talking about it's a good, comedy. Good I'm not talking about a musical. I'm talking about right now, you know, they'll redo Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman in right. a minute. Right. They keep these great playwrights alive and they keep right. them alive. But if we don't own any theaters where Bingo. All of these tourists can come and see the Ron Milners and the Pearl mm -hmm. Kleegs and the all these great writers, Ron the Mara Miller. Barakas and the Ed Bullens. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 ain't supposed to die a natural death. Melvin Van Peebles. Mm -hmm. These are some great plays that are not being done on Broadway. And what they Melvin's do dead. is they, they mm -hmm. document 
our footprint. Mm -hmm. They document us as a people. And if we're not and, there and entertaining, why? and why? the only play we always do on Broadway again and again is Raisin in the Sun. Right. And I love me some Raisin in the Sun and Lorraine Ansberry, but we got some great modern playwrights right now that should be getting produced. Don't you agree, Ernest? I agree oh, because I'm actually doing one right now myself. <laughs> so uh, talk to us a little bit talk about, about it. it. Congratulations. We're, to you, we're, it's a play called Beethoven and Misfortune Cookies. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually about a brother. Mulatto, brother. No, no, no. He's oh. not a mulatto. He's Beethoven. black like Black. Are you, black the, are, are you the character? Beethoven. I'm the character. Yeah. It's a well, one-man show. Mulatto. And, uh, black. And, Teach, uh, baby. And what, he, <laughs> and what he was, was he was, a, he was at the University of Arkansas. Uh, he was a teacher there for 11 years, and he got fired because he had a radical teaching style. Mm. Uh, he used a lot of profanity in the classroom, and uh, also he showed a graphic picture of one of the uh, people he was teaching about. Uh, he was t he, he taught about uh, Beethoven as well as Billy Holiday. Mm -hmm. So he had a cross section of he taught them. He would teach them about Beethoven. He would say, "Hey, listen, uh, this is what I can tell you about Beethoven." Uh, born December 16, 1770, mm -hmm. long considered Europe's greatest classical music composer, was a black man. Well, you don't uh, know that. Specifically, his mother was a Moor, mm -hmm. that group of northern Muslim Africans who conquered right. parts of Europe, making Spain their capital for some 800 years. Now, I bet you most of you have been listening to Beethoven for years, never realized that all this time you were listening They're to black. soul yeah. music. Yeah. Soul music. Yeah. Oh, when they hear that, they fall out laughing. They love it. But I, I'm saying, and then what happened was he was teaching on Billie Holiday. You Love remember the, the, uh, the uh, song Strange Fruit? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Yeah. Well, uh, that, was in, that was inspired by this photograph that's pretty famous now. You can find it on the internet of these two brothers hanging. Hanging, right. Uh, uh, Thomas uh, Shipp and Abram Smith. Mm -hmm. Right. With all, you talking about all the white guys running with taking pictures and all that? Yeah, and they yeah. were pointing and happy. Right, right. You know, and they're hey, laughing, they, right. They just yeah. kind of, well, that inspired that song. It actually was written by a Jewish school teacher by the name of Abel Mirapol. Mm -hmm. uh, the the actual song, it was written as a poem, and uh, and, and so what happened was uh, Billy Holiday took it and uh, and and sang it and made it famous. So it became one of her songs that she sang all along. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, what this brother did is showed this portrait of these guys hanging in the classroom, and it was just a, like a straw that broke the camel's back that mm. got him fired, and this is Arkansas. Right. right. And what year? No, it wasn't that long ago. It was like 1998. Mm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it got him fired. Jesus. If we had a black-owned theater and producer on Broadway right now, the world would see this play because he wouldn't have as hard a time getting it on Broadway. Maybe we could both be doing Rosa Parks, my one woman show, his one man show, and we could be teaching the masses. It's not oh, just man. about dancing Speaking and about singing. It. It's about well, doing plays that make you leave and man. feel that you have learned something. You have had an experience that has moved you. But our plays are not there. I would watch my father's play. I would watch my father do shows at the Inner City Culture Center. I mean, his plays were so prolific. It was like watching movies on stage. Ernest, you you mm. you can attest to that. Let me you just know? you know I, I might have been in one of them. I think you the know. theater Let, is me, our last bastion of truth. It, it is Broadway. our fortress of truth because it is the only place we can go to write what we want to write. Mm. to say what we want to say, how we want to say it, to uh, disseminate the truth about our culture, right. to educate our people about things they know nothing about. And this is why our plays are not on Broadway. Do you understand? And let yeah. me say this, Miss Joyce. But what is the solution? Let me, let me, here's I, mean, this, I, I, here's, I know how well, That's what I here's, say. Here's you know, one. thank God for somebody <laughs> like Magic Johnson who mm. um, had the, the cinema theaters there in Baldwin Hills because because he had that place he had a place for us to show our movies a place for our movies to show longer than they would have shown at the regular white cinema theaters I say that because this is what we need in theater we need people who may not necessarily be 
in the business because Magic Johnson's not an actor, you understand, mm -hmm. but he has given actors and directors and filmmakers a place to show their films and a place to be alive. We need somebody who got the money and the influence and the connection but has a heart but for the arts. Let me and if they have a heart for the arts, they will open up and start a business where the arts can begin to come. That is how we have the Museum of Tolerance, where the, the Jewish people have supported this museum so that they have a place to show where their history is. This is what we need our people to do. You don't have to be in the arts to own a building for the artistic people to come and do that. All you have to do is have a heart for our people and the work that we're trying to put out. And it can't be the people who are in the arts. You know, like all this stuff I'm talking tonight, mm -hmm. I go talk to the white folks, I get blackballed. Yeah. You understand? All I get the blackballed. They won't let me work nowhere else. Get old. You ain't well, happy. You don't like the way white folks do things? Well, we ain't going to let you work no more. Let's call it whiteballed. But let me just white say, ball. Let, me, let, me, <laughs> let, me, let me say, white ball. we talk about solutions. Yeah, and, solutions. And, I, and I say this all the time, and, you know, really, until we get out of this paradigm of this psychological jungle of, I call it bullshit, sorry about it, but it's just bullshit. Because today, right now, if we want to, we can take control of our destinies because we have this thing called new media. We call it the internet. Now, I know a lot of people, a lot of older people don't know about the Internet and how to use it as savvy as younger cats do. But the reality of it is, is that, for instance, this station gets over four point something million a month. Now, what if you had your own artistic channel where, you know, where they were going to there? You know, OK, uh, not maybe four million. It don't have to be on. What I'm saying is doesn't have to be fuck Broadway. Literally, you know what I'm saying? When you can do you, you can put it up, on, put a camera in front of you and put a stage behind you and get busy, right? And show the world. Because if we're going out to 150 countries, people like y'all, people like y'all who've been there, done that, seen it, know it, do whatever, you can do you in a way now that we can never have done ourselves before. All because of the social media and the way we are now in technology, man. We, you, can, we, got we, don't, we need to stop right. begging. And all you got to do is cater to your, cater to your niche. Mm -hmm. And that's going to grow and grow and grow. The same way Tyler did. He catered to his yeah. niche. On like the street. Yes, church. In the doing church. that. The church got it. You and know what in like you doing said, that, he is not on the outside. See, his success comes now because he is a mainstream player. Yeah. So the reason I don't say, you know, screw Broadway is because you got to stop and think. You know, we pay taxes into this country. Mm -hmm. We <laughs> deserve everything. Thing yeah, yeah. that is there for everybody. Mm -hmm. Broadway is significant. Why? Because tourists from all over the world come through there in one week and billions and right. billions of dollars is left there. Right. So right. Two, when, three hundred dollars a pop. So when I <laughs> see we are not present, I can't say screw Broadway. Broadway is my legacy too. I belong here. I just wrote a check to the government for $25,000 last year. You don't tell me that I don't have equal opportunities there. You don't tell me no, that my only answer is to step outside of that and go do something uh, somewhere else. I, no. I think they're telling you that. I want to do it here and I feel that I should be able to call my agent tomorrow and say oh, there's five black plays going on right now on Broadway. I think I want to leave Hollywood for a minute and go to Broadway and go do that for I, a minute. I concur. Yeah, I concur with you. Go Go ahead, Bruce. But the reality is that's not happening. No, it ain't. So what can be is done? Solution, right? What and can be done? Because I, and that's where I the would like to that's where the new media comes young in. people to begin yeah. to think as entrepreneurs but yes. that want to buy those kinds of businesses. But the thing is, it's got to start with one person. I mean, if one person can turn a, a classroom into the art thinking, thinking about art mm -hmm. and loving it, then that will go on to turn some other people. Well, we have to find solutions because, like you said, you've been talking about this for years. This didn't just start. But we have to find people that pick up that energy. We have to find people that pick up that energy. I would love to say energy. something about this. Here's the thing. <coughs> Young people, 
they're into new media. So when you say now, what's the solution? Um, in order to get them to do things like think um, entrepreneurially and want to go back to Broadway and invest in that, we kind of have to marry where they are, which is they're all about the new media. They are all about doing it themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, my, I have two daughters, 19 and 15. What? They, Really? I thought, was I thought you was 19. Don't do it. I thought you was 17 years old. She looked 19. <laughs> no, she. <laughs> they know their way around. They can make movies on, an iPhone. on an iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. On an iPhone. Don't play. Like, seriously. Yes. The, the, they can. It's like they do. The, now they have the vines and they right. have all this stuff. So I, my point is this. The kids don't know about all the stuff that you're talking about, but they have something that we need. And they, and we, we have, have something, something they that need. they Fuse need. It together. And for me, Fuse a solution is trying to learn, bring a space they got where, together. all right, y'all know about this new age crap I don't know nothing about, so work this for me. Let me teach you about yeah. About yeah. what yeah. you know, about, about theater, about, about your history, yes, and exactly, our and so about what you should be doing with that new media that is going to ultimately lift be. us, or could or be doing, could be, could be, could be doing, doing with that new media more. because yeah. if you have this new media in your hand, it's like it's it, it, it's like okay, if you have no place to show it, you know, you you could have all these movie scripts. But if you have no theater to show them in, you but have no movie the theater. theater. They don't even that's go that's to, the thing right. about but the new time. But the everything point that I'm trying to make is they need to be. The able. point that I'm trying <laughs> to right. make is be. that you can have a whole lot of product and have nowhere to make the money for it. Mm -hmm. If if that's you true. buy Master's house, then you don't have to worry about Master kicking you out. But if Master owns the house, then he says who can put a movie here, who can't, who can put a theater here, who can't. But once you own the house, so what I'm trying to say is if enough rich black people got together well, and them decided be master, they huh? wanted to buy <laughs> let that be a whole master. block on Broadway, you know, Bill a whole to do block, that. a NBC, whole right? block. On 42nd Street or 43rd Street or 44th Street, <laughs> and they decide we're gonna buy five theaters, <laughs> and they're ours. This is what our if they block. Wanna, so what if they Very don't allow it? Well, you know allow. Because but because then once you start I talking that. about allow, Not like now you know what I mean. I know exactly you what you mean. I'm to trying to say it. Yes, ma'am. Once you start talking mm -hmm. about allow, now you're going into what I've been trying to talk about in the first place, and that's racism, oh, yeah. and that's the power of what it does to us. Mm -hmm. So you can't say yeah. that it ain't doing nothing to us yeah. because yeah. it is. It is. All so when you say when you start us. talking about what they will allow. Okay, no, don't get me misunderstood. No, Not allow like it's permission the truth. though. No, it's the I'm truth. I'm thinking do something else. I'm I, like, since they don't want to play with us over here. I'm saying is break games. the door down the way we I'm do. saying build our I'm saying break door. the door down and door. make them you know <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, saying build a new door. I'm no saying more. Play somewhere else because and make them because come play. You. Because let me tell you yes. something. Because you whoever, know, whoever the powers that be. But let me tell you something. Little. We yeah. did that with theater. We created a place called the National Black Theater Festival in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. What My happened? friend, Larry Leon Hamlin, God rest his soul, still, created still this going. theater. Oh, okay. It's this wonderful place that you don't know nothing about, and you should, mm -hmm. every two years. On the odd year that all these intellectual black people come and present their wonderful black plays. Mm. And he turned this into a billion dollar business. Now, the media ain't coming in there the way they should to let you know it's there. And I can mention some of every famous actor that has been there at that festival. From Morgan Freeman to Angela Bassett to mm. Leslie Uggams. Mm. Everybody mm. has been there. And it's every two years on the odd year. Mm. This is what my friend did in answer to what you're talking about. He created that uh, 20, 25 years right. ago. And I've been a part of it all those years. A lot of us, Ernest, me, and a lot of our friends helped him to build that vision. But when I talk about places like Broadway, we cannot dismiss that because it belongs to us too. It is our heritage. 
You spend your money and you go see those Broadway plays. Your friends go see them. Your relatives go see them. Mm -hmm. Why aren't we there? So what I say is take your money and your attitude... Mm -hmm. And decide you're going to take that. That is what Magic Johnson did when he started those theaters. And thank God he did that. Do, do you understand really? how important it was when he started those theaters at Baldwin Hills? Because if those weren't there, we wouldn't have had no place the Pan to African show Film Festival. I mean, the Pan-African Film the Black Hollywood. We wouldn't have had no place. Right. What we've got to do is change our mentality those that have the money and have the influence and have the affluence mm -hmm. and the ability to say we need to create the house, the places for these places to be, and we to agree. own them. We, it's about changing agree. our way of going around because we can be consumers and consumers. We can make a million movies. There's a whole lot of black movies sitting on shelves right oh, now man. collecting Scripts dust because they don't have a network to show them on. They don't have a theater to show them at. Let me can can, me, can, I, can, me, I, can go I, ahead, Ernest. I just want to, well, I'm coming off the, th but I just want to plug plug this show. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no. Please, I got ahead. a movie to plug, too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to get to all the plug -in. We're getting ready to wrap up in the next, you know, 15 minutes. I you going to wrap up. But go ahead, go ahead. No, you know, it's just, it's speaking of, like, trying to do your own thing, you know, so. Because we want to stay there. Right. So, I mean, I thing. tried to, like, I mean, like, being an actor in Hollywood, hey, you know, I worked like you, and uh, I did movies, and I just did something with Clint Eastwood. I did, you know, all these, these films. But still, that's still waiting for an agent to call you to get, you mm -hmm. know, it's always been... So Proper when I got involved with this this project, you know, I like one of the co-writers of it, and and uh, I felt like, and then I told them the other people that I'm working with are not just uh, black, you know, a couple of white producers, but I said, hey, you know, therefore I want to be a producer. I'm not going to let mm -hmm. let's sign these contracts. If you want to sign them, let's all do it. This is not the Temptations. This is not 1958 <laughs> where I'm just happy to sing. Right. No, no, we, we, we're going to get this all right. So, I mean, what I'm saying is now that we had a tour in Michigan, uh, we went to Michigan State University, we, 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 we killed them. We had a run out here at the Met Theater for six weeks. Mm, we had wow. like, uh, then we hit Detroit. And what's the name of it again? Uh, Beethoven's Misfortune yeah. Cookies. And then we went from there to... And it probably and should we be just, on Broadway. And we, just, and we yeah. just got booked to go to the Odyssey Theater. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Odyssey is like, they basically do the white uh, plays, but uh, I said, hey, you need me over here, <laughs> and convinced them. And so we opened November the 17th at the Excellent. Odyssey. All right. So, yeah. Wow. So, and we're him. using, as a matter of fact, and we were just talking about how to promote the play and how to get it. And we were talking about just the things that you were talking about, merging media, media merging with the social networks Absolutely. and the uh, and the Facebook and everything. It's a must. Absolutely. And now and yeah, using yeah. today's technology to try to get it's us out must. there. It's a must. And the, on, the only you reason have to do it now. The only reason why we talking and why I feel her energy and passion for this is that yeah, you know, we built a lot of things, we've done so much and you know, but economically you know, we can, I can sit, you know, if me sitting somewhere or being somewhere, it, that's socially, that's one thing, right? But when you have a constructive, diabolical plan economically to keep me in this box, mm -hmm. and you're not, I don't give a freak who you are, I may, you may be in another compartment, but you're still in the boat, and you in my boat. And I want to. I'm gonna compartmentalize you economically, and mm -hmm. because we don't we don't print the money, and the money that we do you know spend to the IR, send to the IRS uh, really goes to the Federal Reserve because they mm -hmm. control the whole economic structure here in this particular country right now. But they now. can't control our minds. Our and minds there are you bigger. Go. Then I mean, no and one can on stop that. you. And let's, that's the reason we still here that. as a people. Yes, right. I mean, we so bad. We are such a bad people I agree. that we raise, we rose above all of the oppression, yeah. all of the suppression, all of the misrepresentation about who we really are as a people because we such a 
bad people. Oh, and man. that's what we Say need to always remember in the forefront. When you're looking at a country that didn't want to educate you, yeah. made it an issue, yeah. where you don't get no education, you can't even sit, you can't even sit on the same toilet I was on, uh-huh. you can't drink out the same water fountain. They did so much psychological damage to us generation after generation. And yet, we rose above it. Yes, yeah. Yet, look at who we are. Still look at right. where we are. Look at Still how right. great our people are. Look how talented and intelligent we are. We didn't go anywhere. We are greater than what we think we are. I look at black people in America and I say, you know what? We have the ruby slippers. We have the ruby slippers. We just don't know that you click it three times <laughs> and that will get you all the power you want. And her power was to go home. Our power is should be to have our own economical industry <laughs> where we are a part of it and we're providing work for everyone. We can go in and boycott anybody we want if, and, and make these networks Let me do what we want we them to do. But we have so to people, be of one mind to do that. Like and, and, and let me say this, and you 100% correct. Uh, and just give you all a quick story. Um, Muammar Gaddafi, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people know him, uh, the leader, of what's, was the leader of Libya. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, a lot of, we heard so many stories about him and all kind of crazy shit. But they killed him, right? Mm-hmm. And Reagan. A, and, and a lot of people don't understand why he's dead. Right, and because he went to the um, African Union in African with all the African countries, and he said, "We're going to get away from the American dollar, and what we're going to do is start printing our own money. You know, we're going to get away from them. We got the gold, African gold standard." Mm-hmm. Immediately, about a week or so later, <laughs> they Merck. took him out. Yeah. Right, hello, uh, absolutely. And, and, and I say this to say this, right. And because, you know, if we're if we're if we're fearful that somebody's going to so-called do something to us, then we might as well just die. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? You already did. I, exactly. You, already did. you know, and the only way, you know, I speak about this new media, because you, we have to be educated. We we need your wisdoms. You know what I'm saying? We need that. But we need to couple that with new media and we can pay and get paid for this on our own on our own and standards and own them. grounds. We can promote it on our own standards and our own grounds, and we don't have to go begging. That's what yeah. I said. Find your niche, you know. And That's all I'm saying. To cater to and your you know, niche. And when I say, when I it's about building your own. Okay, it's exactly. about building your yeah. own. You can, if you can use media, new media and figure out a way to make it so that it becomes money for everybody. Yeah. It, and it's about making everybody come see what now it look, is you me, got. Yeah, hold on one second. New sec. media I, I, elected I, I, the president. Let me tell you, <laughs> this is just to you. Okay, I saw Rosa Parks. I know what you do with that. Imagine recording that and putting it up on the internet. Millions of people pay per view. Pay per view. Okay, you control this. Pay per view. Nobody else. You get paid for this. You got everything. Co- That's new media. Mm-hmm. Now, what you are doing at Your this time? Broadway. Hold on. Yeah, let her is talk. you let her are talk. introducing them to Broadway. You're bringing them into what you're trying to get them to do. You got their attention because they're watching it right here on their hand or on their iPad Mm. or they're telling their friends, do you know who Rosa Parks is? Check this out. Let me send you this link. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got millions Mm -hmm. of people and you got young people because they're the ones that they're trying everything. They're looking on the internet for everything. (laughs) They're starving for (laughs) For anything that brings their interest. If you can get them interested, it's over. You know what? They I think that will he, feed everything you're talking about. But you've got to incorporate the new media into this. And it's so fucking I'll I tell mean, you how it makes so money too. Easy. People can I'll see people can see six minutes of my clip if they go to www.arosamongthorns.com. Okay. Okay. You can go see six minutes of my clip from a live show. 
that the Omega Sci Fi mm. um, sponsored dog, at uh, Nate Holden's nice. theater how couple, about, several years ago. How about if if they paid five ninety nine? That's what I'm saying. Saw view. the whole pay show per view. and mm-hmm. there's set that up a hundred thousand people watching that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. from well, their house, right from their house. And Prime you got example. Advertis- okay, go ahead. I'll yes. tell you. Uh, I'll tell you. <laughs> I love this. How, how this is makes money, and this is old to the hip hop culture. Believe it. R- rappers. Young hip hop artist, Soldier Boy. They doing it out Drake. here. Drake. Soldier Boy was nobody. He took he got on YouTube, put a video up on YouTube. He got so many hits, all the labels come to yeah. t- came to him. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Drake. Same thing with Luda. Can you say so that? It's so like, can you say that again? Because <clears throat> the reality of even Tyler Perry. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> the reason why Tyler Perry got where he is. Because of his efforts that he did on the streets mm-hmm. first. first. Mm-hmm. Say that again. Right, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like he, they, he brought so much attention to himself mm-hmm. by way of new media, YouTube, mm-hmm. that they came for him. And that's what I was saying about if we play over here w- with what is wide open to us. Right. Yeah. It's new. It's wide it's open. It's a new yeah. frontier. Dude, every mm-hmm. boo-boo to fool with something to show is showing. It's so showing. you, so said, you, you said, got you said, something take, good. Take a play. Take this play, our exactly. play, and just put it on, on YouTube. YouTube. Duh. Put it on. Put a put clip. Look. You put like a three-minute really? three clip uh, on I'll show you YouTube. how I go. Then you promote no. that clip. Yeah. You got a Facebook. You got a Twitter. You, you got an Instagram. You promote the hell out. You send everybody. everybody all, all traffic. Your followers, you get on all whoever your followers, else you know got your a friends. website. Some, she got a website. You put a link on her website and you send all her traffic to that clip. When they see that clip, some people going to be like, oh, that's nice. They're not going to nothing. Some people going to be like, oh, I need I like to know that. where I can see that. Right. I yeah. Know where I, can get I want to see the full that. clip. Who do I contact yeah. tr- to try to get it in well, there? Well, how do I Come on, let's get it Solution. Solution. The agents and the industry. I'm a musician. No, I can't. That's Broadway. Mm, yeah, that's show Broadway. So I can't you, fuck mm. with nobody if I'm not. On it. When people That's say, well, right. what you got? Where you at? Where can I see? What can I so the clip, the clip or the entire you? show. Either way, either way, nothing else. It's, it's, it. it's, it's a process. It's a process. Either way you want to do it. You know? It's a process. Yeah. You, but it's definitely small. something okay. to find out about and marry with, you know, marry with what you're doing because the young people And then eventually once you do that, then you have automatically you have the, the audience yes. that yes. wants to come you see you on Broadway. Yes. For, example, they, for example, for example, want to come see okay, yes, okay. Now, here, here, now here's my yeah. plug. Here's my plug. November 24th at the Mint. Everybody knows about the Mint Club mm-hmm. right there on Pico. Uh, we're doing my launch party for Defy Global, Defy Pro Sport. And it's, it's a pay-per-view event. It's called the Fish Fry. And it's, the, again, November 24th on a Sunday, 8 o'clock. And we have live music. We have a fish fry. We have a uh, uh, body mo- body art models. You know, we doing all this pay per view, and uh, it's like two ninety nine. You know, mm-hmm. we're broadcasting the I'm world in conjunction with LA Talk Jeff Live, Jeff. the Mint the mm-hmm. Mint Club, as well as Defy Pro Sport. We're doing that. We have a uh, Tommy O as our band. You know, from the uh, uh, Michael Jackson mm-hmm. This Is It tour. That's part of our band members. Like, let me two or three of those guys. Uh, we have a Grammy Award winning pr- uh, 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 artist pr- performing that night. We have uh, a live. Uh, Visual artists that's going to know from the start, I mean, the beginning of the show all the way to the end of the show. Going to be doing the painting and then he's going to auction that off at the end of the show. And we're doing all this pay per view, $2.99. Oh, wow. You know? So, uh, well, I want to send everybody to ellajoyce.com. Right. <laughs> ellajoyce.com. <laughs> so they can see what all I got going on. I got a movie coming out. I'll, I'll, right. I will appear in the upcoming Nina Simone movie. Oh, really? Right. Come out right. Here, so I'll be appearing right. in that. Right. I'm getting ready to start working on another uh, uh, film, a uh, little action, little horror film in about another month really? nice. uh, with a first-time director. And, uh, you know, I'm just staying busy, baby, out here right. doing my God thing. Is good. Hey, and, uh, I'll be coming out good. in the Bronx Bull. It's uh, Raging Bull 2. Wow. And also getting ready to do a film about an old-school rapper. It was <laughs> What's the name of it? Uh, it's called... Stanford and son. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. If you need right. some help in the, uh, if you need any kind of help with uh, doing the raps, whatever, let me know. Okay. You know All right. Get your All right. We'll it, start know? shooting in December. All right, really? Let me know. Yeah. You know. I can rock and be your rap coach. Okay. Straight up. All right. I'm an MC. And we're, so, we're getting you know. work done here, right here on uh, the Shock Fact here on LA Talk Live. 
I want to thank everybody once again for. Uh, can I plug? I enjoy show, being oh, here. With you you sure can. We're, you we're sure can. We're, we're definitely. I'm not done. But we was. Okay. We were definitely going to get to you, your okay. show, and more conversation as well. But go ahead. Because Brooke does an incredible show yes. here Thursday. Oh, uh, I wasn't talking about that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, what are you talking about? about? No, I'm talking about the show and Brooke's the show of. that's coming up this weekend, the charity you guys are doing. Just talk a little bit about that, too. Uh, every Thursday, you can catch me here on a necessary conversation from noon until 2 p.m. And I have some amazing guests, and we talk about any number of things so it's a great show <laughs> it's an awesome that's show. A, that's it, where it, i came it, in at. Big, we, had me on it's our a show. big deal and ella i know you're going to be coming soon and i would love to have you Ernest, to oh, come great. on my show soon and this weekend we are having a big fundraiser to bring awareness to domestic violence it's called no reason to return my fundraiser i mean my nonprofit, is called when w-i-n-d Win. women in need of direction and we provide emergency services for women in need. Okay, and mm. this th Sunday, 6 p.m. to 9, we will be doing an amazing comedy show fundraiser starring Miss Coco Brown. Uh, she's one of Tyler Perry's favorites. Kalita Smith from First Family and the Bernie Mac Show. Treze, uh, famous comedian, uh, Sexy Marlowe, Miss Vanessa Graddick. And Deanna Nichelle, will, r and vocalist, will be closing the show. All right, Deanna Nichelle. All right, all right, all right, so Deanna Nichelle. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So the tickets are only $20. $20. All the money goes to the charity, and we could save some women's lives. So come out and support us. Sweet. Uh, and that's a beautiful cause. And, Very beautiful. Um, I'm definitely going to be there. I uh, want to see what's actually going on. I want to laugh, want to smile, yeah. you know, want to get into the, you know, energy. And if there's any energy that I can give, you know, um, I'm willing to do that as well. Absolutely. <clears throat> but uh, I want, like, again, I want to thank uh, Rocky uh, again for uh, bringing Miss Joyce, uh, Mr. Harden, um, at the same time to the shock factor. Uh, we really appreciate them and their service to not only to the our community, but to the world. You know, yes. and so many people have, you know, watched you guys mm -hmm. and still watch you guys. And that's why I know, you know, with new media, right, and, and with that whole ideology and that mind frame of ownership, you know, you guys will, can do that much more, yeah. you know, and you guys are, are awesome to our community. And we just love you. Well, thank you, you know, so much. I you love too. you. We love, love you too. Yes, love I love you too. I love your passions. <laughs> yeah. Oh you know my God! Oh. Yeah. How about taking that passion and that whole conversation and putting that up on the internet? And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how about that? Wanna, yeah. How about we do something like yes, the interview, or that you know where where you interview people, actors every every week, and explore the passions and drive people to Broadway you could I mean I got tons of ideas I'm going to be like starting like like an like ongoing yeah, class um, matter of fact in West Hollywood people can check my website to see when it actually goes up but we're thinking about starting something at Taylor Rose Salon Shop uh, right there on um, um, Santa Monica Boulevard where we'll be doing something akin to inside the actor's studio, yeah, but it'll yeah. be for black exactly. actors. Excellent. Because Excellent. we want to celebrate our own, mm -hmm. and we want our people to know who these people are. That's great. So, uh, you know, just tell them to keep checking my website. Hopefully we'll have the, the series up and running maybe by the beginning of the Excellent. year. Excellent. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, incredible. Incredible. And, uh, you know, there's so much more. You know, and you and Brooke, I know y'all, you know, but y'all are two powerful women, too, as well. You know, Brooke is very powerful in the things that she do yes. and, and her actions and her deeds. Yes. You know, and I really appreciate her and her service as well. Um, but uh, once again, it's another crazy shock factor. I love know, it. We, we <laughs> do, you know, like I said, we do this here every Friday. Every Friday. Uh, and our purpose for doing this mainly is to bring education because you know, when I say things like forget Broadway, I'm not saying it in a disrespectful way. Yeah, I know. What you're or anything saying. like that. Yeah. But it, what I'm saying is, is that if we don't take action, 
You it's, know, if we don't be the new Harriet Tubman's, right. the new, yes. the new yes. in the 21st Martin century, Kings, in the 21st you, century, man, you, you got yeah, to, the new heroes. You know, if we don't be these heroes, if we don't do this, then we're going to keep on talking. Mm -hmm. If we don't grab ownership of something, my right, first, our families, first, ourselves, collectively, mm -hmm. and then anything that's tangible, you know, that that's ours. Mm -hmm. Because what they're saying is, is that, look, we own this. We, you know, you may own that house, but we own that land, right. Right. right? You may own that look, you know, your bank account or whatever, but we own the paper. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, okay, we get you, we, we get got you, you, you know, and now we have a Let better. Let me do my thing still. And we, right, and we have a better chance right now than any time in history, mm -hmm. you know, because of technology to do us more than ever. You know, and if once we take, you know, control of that, you know, and, and keep that paradigm is that, you know, if I do X, Y, Z, because every time it's happened in the music industry, I can look at everybody that's been so-called successful, their beginnings. Um, and then once somebody saw their talents, what they do, they come swoop them up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Capitalize on it. Let me, let, me, let me shine you with this. Give you all this. And, yeah. you know, throw right. your mind away from the real deal. Yeah. I don't want you thinking about your community until you get a little older and then you start to think, I could have been doing something back, bringing somebody else up. Mm -hmm. well, the bottom line is, time is ticking. You know you what I mean. So right. we don't have to. We don't have. We don't have time to waste. We don't have no time to be. Not time at all. is ticking. Something it's, you never get. So back. It's, it's, it's it's up to us to like you know. Like we said, we can wait on the Broadways and this and other, but it's up to us to create that Broadway at this point. The Especially new Broadway. Like, you, like she said. It's up to us to create fusing, right now because. the media. Right now. Think about it. I mean, you look at 10 years from now, what shows will you point to that accurately represents our experience exactly. right now? It, it's and there gonna be are hard. none. It's going to be hard to do it. There but, are none. Because it's about when, the in and out. Everything is about the old and the new. When we look at shows 20 years ago, at least we had something. I mean, Even Three's Company. We had rock. We had Great um, the in living shows. single. Oh man! We had in living color. Exactly. We had shows that footprinted the time. We don't have that now. That is an emergency situation. The it's way I see it. The That's show, an emergency you know? situation. Because when you, like I say, 10, 15 years from now, they're going to look at 2013. What TV shows could All be showing rough game. reruns right now? The game. This show this time. <laughs> And, and and you look at the FCC networks; they are white shows. But uh, on, on, mm -hmm. only one they gonna barely, I mean, probably say is like the game, right. the game. Well, you know, not only, that's, not but only that's that. not cable, in, but that's, that's not cable. in production right now. That's reruns, reruns already. Right. Right. Already. So when you talk about what's in production, right, is what right. I'm talking exactly. about. I think the game is still. Is it it in it's production? on BET, right? Yeah, it's on BET. Okay, but it's on BET. Week. So that's when you look at the old reruns for Channel Four, for for NBC, for CBS. For ABC and for Fox, what are you going to point to to say that represented a black family show when we had a black man in the, in the White House, right. we got a black family, and we don't have one show that represents that family right now. None of Not that. one and there, show. And there won't be because... I went to black university, me, and I've, I've had families right. like that all day long that me, was like me, prominent. Me, I'm getting ready to close up, but let me just say this right quick. The reason why we won't see that is because we don't have any ownership, right? Which is and what I said at the top of this show, didn't I? We don't exactly. have no ownership. Yes, ma'am. And until we get ownership of ourselves, right, we, we're going to always be complaining. Mm -hmm. We're going to complain until we turn white. <laughs> that's not going to happen. Okay. It? So that's forever. That's forever. We're going to keep on complaining. Infinite. We're going to keep on complaining. Well... Or what's even worse, we're not going to complain. We're just going to take and it, accept, accept it. it. And, and it, that's, that's what's that's happening right now. That's the worst. That is what's happening right now to anybody that has not questioned yes, why there is not a black family show yeah. on that major network that pays $20,000 a week for their actors. Yeah. Why is there not a black major show on there right now? And I think they will tell you that we don't want to see no niggas. On this shit right here. This Bottom is line. our shit. Bottom line. This is our shit. It's the last shit we can hold on to. I <laughs> believe it's even deeper than that. It's like we ain't got nothing to laugh at right now. Because if we ain't laughing at y'all, 
we ain't laughing with you. Not at all. Okay? So since we can't laugh at you and make fun of you, there ain't nothing funny to put on. Right. That's why we ain't got no sitcoms and we ain't yeah. got no black family shows and we yeah. have no hour shows. Y'all too serious. Thank you. <laughs> and we don't even have no serious shows. At one time, we had Life Homicide on the Street. There were three black men in principal roles on that show. Now we got We 24. ain't got that no more. Well, we got, the, we the got wire. 24 now. And how many black people on there? The Wire. <laughs> well, I'm saying 24. Uh-huh. How many? 40, I mean, 48 hours. I'm at this how, many oh, black, hours. how many black <laughs> people go. got a lead role on that show? Got lead contract roles on that show. Well, none of them because they're okay. They, they got their they they, they, got, they, got, they got they got lead roles. They got lead roles. They got lead roles. They make no money. Life on the side on the street yeah. had three black had Yafet Cotto and uh, we had Andre Braher and that other brother that was on. We had three <laughs> black men who had contract roles on that show. We don't have an hour drama. We don't have a half hour family show. So we have nothing blueprinting our culture, our time, our legacy right now in 2013, 2014, 2012, mm-hmm. yesterday, 2011. Right. Wasn't no shows. None. Mm-hmm. None. That's a lot of years. And That's, that serious. Well, That's serious. That's you serious. Know, and it's so serious. We want to have you come back. Uh, no, <laughs> you got more to talk about. Yeah, we wanna, geez, we I got too more. much. Lots. We want to get about. all of it. I do. I we got too much to talk Lots. about. We about greedy. We want it all. We we want to get all of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. On our new media, I be just fussing. <laughs> no, and it's okay. No, you're not fussing. You're just explaining. <laughs> That's the passion. Right. That's passion. I love you people with passion. Fussing. Express yourself. Mm-hmm. I love <laughs> passion. <laughs> you know, tell this shit out here because somebody. It. If nobody own it. If nobody's right. out here talking about it, yeah. then, like we're just falling for the same old with a different with a different face on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're falling for the same old tricks. Mm-hmm. We know? accept exactly. it like it's normal and like it's natural. Yeah. Right. And it isn't. It's and not. they and they look at it like if you're not accepting it, what's wrong what's with, with you? What's wrong, wrong, wrong with you? Wrong with you. Yeah. What's wrong with you? I gotta cut you oh, off. Wait a minute, racism? There's no racism anymore. We got a really? black you, anymore? Right. Right. We got a yeah. black, hey, we got what a black mean? president. You shouldn't be What do a, you mean? What do you mean? I never had nothing like that deal. I haven't president and happened to me before. What are you complaining about? Exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, wanna thank you guys for tuning in to the shop back. I want to thank our guest, Ella Joyce. All right. You know, I want to thank, uh, we love you. Love you. You are a treasure to our community. Yeah. We love you. you. No, I'm serious. I love you. Thank you. I love y'all too. I adore you and Ernest love you, sweetheart. Harden Jr., we love you. We love you, Ernest. Love Ernest. Ernest. Thank we love, you. We love you, my friend. It was my pleasure being here. We want to have you guys having you. back. Definitely have you back. Be great. Because uh, uh, we got more to talk about. We got more to, you know, go ahead and get out here about what you guys are doing. Now we didn't get into all that. Okay, you know, we got more to talk about. When y'all get a minute, you know, let us know when you can come. Okay, back. hopefully mm-hmm. they get this movie out um, with Nina Simone. You know, well, you about got, Nina oh, Simone. Well, you got to come, come back, back and talk you to you. About to. It. We got to be okay. the first to get it. We got to be the first to get it. Brooks, we love you for Thank coming you. in yes. and your organization, your uh, cause going on this weekend. One more this time. This weekend, Sunday at the Comedy Union, 6 p.m. We will be raising money to bring awareness to domestic violence. When W I N D women in need of direction. Keep tickets your hands are off the women. Only twenty dollars. That's it. Only twenty dollars. Keep your hands we'll off the see women. You on Sunday at the Comedy Union over on Pico. Right. Women are hey, you women are precious diamonds and jewels in life. God put you guys here and bless you as men to have the nurturing side of the women. So men, or even women that are in relationships with women, leave the domestic violence alone it is not that serious learn to love go deep within to understand self first once you can understand self and your purity then that way you can be able to express that and deal with any relationship on any level in this lifetime god bless you all right so uh ladies and gentlemen want to thank you guys for tuning in to another shock factor friday yes uh, we really appreciate you guys for tuning in from around the world we do this every friday at eight o'clock pacific standard time we love you. We appreciate you. Uh, and I want to thank everybody that's tuning in from Atlanta, Detroit, uh, out here in Los Angeles, London, uh, all overseas. Mo, we miss you. Mo, we'll, see we you miss next, you. we'll see you next week, Mo. We know you're out of town. Uh, you know, to Life MC, we love Shout you, my out. brother. 
Uh, I want to give love to my family, my mom, uh, and so many, uh, my brother and family, and you know, so many. Cleveland people. in the house. You know, Cleveland <laughs> all day, getting ready for basketball. I know I'm caught up in the Matrix too. That's so all good. It's yeah. all good too. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Shaq Kim Williams. You caught a wolf. And I want to thank you guys for tuning in. We love you. And same time, 8 o'clock, same sandbox, LA Talk Live. I'm going to send a shout out to my to my mama, Diane Rockmore. I know she's watching right now. And my brother, big brother, B-Rock. I know he's watching. My sister-in-law, Sharon, Shea Boog out there. I got some homegirls out there over there in Florida. I got uh, uh, Jackie Reed out there. Rodriguez, excuse me. Send a shout out. They're going to wink for you. Uh. And Amy Jo Coons out there in Ohio. You want to send a shout out? Detroit, Michigan, Fisk University, stand up. Dre Roll, West Warren, and Tommy, stand up. Yeah. Shout out to Detroit. Yeah, Detroit. 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 Living noise. D. Living noise. Yeah. Living noise. <laughs> we see you guys next week. We love you. Yeah, right. Jackie, I see you out there. Uh, they're going to wink. Thank you for tuning in to the Shock Factor, guys. You know? Thank you for choosing.